get to the party. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, I'd like to call uh, the Bloomington Historic Preservation Commission to order uh, for February 27th, 2020. And I want to welcome uh, our guests this evening. And uh, let's move on. Roll call. Doug Bruce. Here. Sam DeSoller. Here. Susan Dyer. Jeff Golden. Here. Deb Hutton. Lee Sandwise. John Saunders. Here. Chris Sturbaum. Here. Duncan Campbell. Ernesto Castaneda. Derek Ritchie. Jenny Southern. Here. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's move on to approval of our minutes from our February 13th meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Doug Bruce? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. Jeff Golden? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Chris Durbaum? Yes. Motion carries. All right. We move on to certificates of appropriateness. And we'll start out with counter uh, COA dash. COA 20-10. Uh, this was in 614 West Allen Street, Medola Historic District. This was a staff review and approval. Um, there's a slew of alterations being done to the building. Uh, they were gonna, they removed, well, you can see here, they removed this before it was approved. So in a way, it's a retroactive COA, um, but it was a poorly constructed shed addition on the east elevation. Uh, the remo removal of the chimney, removal of a partial brick veneer uh, here on the front facade, uh, removal of two windows on the north elevation, which is the rear of the building, um, and replacement of board and batten siding with vinyl lap siding. Uh, staff finds that besides the chimney, none of the features being removed were original to the building, and staff supports the petitioner's investment in this non-contributing building and finds that the scope of work could potentially return the building to a, a contributing status, uh, so staff made the approval there. All right, thank you, Connor. All right, let's quick, quick question. Oh, yes. Just about what did they say about not understanding that they should have done something about applying for a CVA? So the owners are from Rhode Island, and I don't think they were aware of the historic district and the process for all that. So um, this one was actually brought to my attention by someone who saw the work going on, right. um, and I was able to contact them and stop everything um, in its tracks. And by that stage, just that shed addition has been torn off. I, I have mm -hmm. been to that project, and that shed could have fallen down by oh, itself. Yeah, it was yeah. uh, horrible looking. And I yeah, have sure. <laughs> just two little questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, is it okay to use vinyl siding in the historic district? Absolutely. Because it's in McDowell, okay. yes. In McDowell, yeah. okay. And the second was, uh, I saw mention in it something about a 2020 by 20 parking, gravel parking. You might mention to them, I don't think that's legal if it's that's RC zone. Um, was that this one? This 20 by 20? Um, I, don't, I think it would depend on their impervious surface coverage. Um, so as long as they're under 40? Yeah, there's a maximum. Yeah, maximum maybe is 40 or 45. Mm. No. But so to answer your question, Jenny, that's okay. not as much right. my concern as planning takes care of all that before they give out the okay. permit. Okay. So. All right. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, COA 20-4. This is 703 South Woodlawn. This is in the Elm Heights Historic District. This is given the rating of contributing. Uh, it's an arts and crafts four square built circa 1920. Uh, background to this is the petitioner. Uh, had completed the work without obtaining a COA. Um, essentially, uh, I believe they had some, some water issues, a leak of a pipe of some sort, and so they had to tear out a small wooden deck here between the stoops that existed before, um, and then this was rebuilding that, although they did rebuild it slightly larger than the one before. Um, and then while they're at it, they said these railings were not structurally sound, and so uh, sorry, there was iron railings here before. They removed those and added these these wooden railings. So uh, reading the Elm Heights Historic District guidelines, um, it talks about architectural metals and state that the removal or replacement of metal elements requires a COA and that substitute materials should only be considered if using the original material is not technically feasible. Um, I don't believe that was the case here. Um, I wasn't able to verify the condition of the original iron railings um, so I don't know as to their, you know, integrity or condition. Um, 
but the staff recommendation would be a partial approval of this. Um, staff recommends approval of the replacement of the wooden platform um, between the stoops. The guidelines don't address this kind of a feature. It's small enough that it doesn't really impact the historic character of the overall building, um, and it can be easily removed in the future. Uh, staff does recommend that the metal railings be reinstalled. Metal guardrails are a feature of the streetscape in the area, and I can show you some examples of that. Um, just up and down the street here, you see a lot of these metal railings for these front porch walks, and staff finds that those wooden ones are, are really out of place and that the metal ones should be um, either reinstalled or new ones found that are similar to the old ones and installed. All right, thank you, Connor. Is there a petitioner with us this evening? Great, thank you. Do you have any additional comments you'd like to add? I just wanted to give more clarification on what, what caused the initial construction. We had a sewer pipe, a clay sewer pipe, that collapsed in on itself. So they had to dig up the entire front yard, which you'll see to the left side. Um, it's a little bit more muddy. Um, when we decided to build it up, we decided to build it up um, because we were worried about rot if we left it down on the ground. And then once again, with replacing the metal going up and down the stairs, we did that because they were, it was, Placed, whoever had put it in didn't put it in well and it was literally like a safety concern at that point uh, we are a rental company and I the safety of our tenants was um, in question thank you uh, Jeff questions no question. Chris uh, just for staff that that porch just says bare treated wood um, would it be within our purview to say put a dark stain on it, do something that makes it not look like a deck in front of a house. We are planning on, I don't know if I'm allowed to, we are planning on painting it, so whatever colors you guys would like to approve. Oh, cool. Um, we, we're, we're just waiting for the weather to get better. Great, thank you. Jenny? Uh, yeah, the, uh, I think those are concrete steps there, not limestone. Are you talking about these? No. Those are limestone yes, up there. And it's just the outer edge. The, Correct. It's wood between. Yes. Uh, no, down where the rails are? Yeah. These are. Yeah, I think those are concrete. Yeah. Right. Um, I would like to mention to the owner that they ha are in possession of a uh, limestone ribbon drive. And uh, to please not change that. They might not be aware that a driveway could be protected. So uh, I'd just like to mention it while we have the chance. Okay. Duncan? <laughs> oh. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Doug? No questions. Sam? Has the uh, Elm Heights Neighborhood Design Review Committee looked at this and do they have an opinion? They, they knew about it and actually mentioned it to the workers, uh, to people that were walking by. Uh, that they needed a CFA. <clears throat> so they were very happy basically that they did work without the CFA and they might have said okay for the wooden platform, probably lower. Uh, if they really needed it between the steps and probably not forward like that, but since this is retroactive and what's done is done, they didn't recommend ripping out the deck. They did, they did say they would rather not have the rail, but to have the black, as plain as possible metal rail. I have a couple of questions for the petitioner as well. Um, so the, uh, there's this wood deck that's infilled between the two uh, limestone steps. Yes, sir. Um, Google Maps says there's actually not earlier, there was not an infill wood deck there. This is brand new infill and it's just the limestone steps came down to a... a Rocky area. To a concrete walk and then out. I've tried to find photos, like, so this was, a, you guys will have to forgive me as well. It looks like that. That's what it looked like before you guys did it. Do you mind? No. So that's Google Maps from... This you... area? Yep. This one. Yeah, that's what you did. So my question is, uh, the, surface, the surface of the steps, you have... Would you go back to the... Um, you, well, yeah, go to the Google Maps and then... I just want to see if we can get any pictures on Elevate that might show that. Google Maps doesn't show it. No, my Google Maps does. I don't know what yours is. There it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you've got like these limestone steps that come to a concrete walk at grade. There is a little wood platform there, Sam, I believe. Well, let me show you what I've got. This is when I pulled up Google Maps. This is what I saw and walking by every day. That's what I saw. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is just this is like this is not concrete slab. It's a slab. Yeah. And then, but what about? These aren't actual limestone steps. Yeah. No, that's yeah. carpet or something on top. Yeah, but the steps are limestone. It's all it's limestone. Just this but part is limestone. If you pull up the deck, the steps are still there. We didn't remove any steps. We didn't remove any. Uh, so it's like a limestone wall in yeah. front of wood steps. Yeah, like if you pull everything out, mm -hmm. the steps are still underneath that. We built everything up to the steps. All right. Because I think Connor and I had that conversation via email that the, those steps did not get removed. So you've infilled the steps. The, the, it looks like the bottom one or two steps. Yes. Is the is the riser height um, unaffected? Can you give me a little bit? Like, can you dumb that down a little bit for me? Okay. So, by code, you're required to have like you have a set of steps, mm -hmm. and each step has to be the same height. Mm -hmm. Did you change that? No, not to my knowledge. My the gentleman who did our construction, like I said did not inform me I needed a COA, which was, I've been running the properties for two years, so I, I just realized this, um, but he he's familiar with the code. So to my knowledge, no, but that's definitely something I'd be willing to look into. If you need to okay, and then it, it also, sorry. No, you go ahead. And then it also looks like there's some gray stuff on top of the deck, what is that? Yeah, it's a trek, just so it's just, um, we, like I said, we have tenants and things like that. So we use cedar for the exterior, but on the interior where it's getting the most traffic, we just use a track deck, easy to clean. So it's a composite wood plastic yes. stuff. Okay, thank you. I don't have any questions. Mm -hmm. I don't have any questions. Oh, okay. Okay. Comments, Jeff? Um, I, I agree with Connor. That's how I would propose for. A motion. Yeah, I did have a question, which I'll just take before the comment, okay. which is, what was the motive of putting that uh, there when you had steps and a walk? Was that a leak problem? Was that? It was a sewer line. So, so the sewer line literally comes right underneath that, and then the, it collapsed. It, it literally had to be replaced from underneath, like right in the middle, all the way out to the street. So, so they had, had to dig into the entire... Under, kind of had to destroy that. <clears throat> to, the, the, to yeah, they had to dig into that. So that cement piece that you guys were seeing, with where the wood was, right. and that was completely dug up. Yeah. Okay. And the reason we were so quick to act was because I was getting several phone calls from very angry parents right. um, that they're tracking mud in the house. And so I was just trying to address that issue. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to express my apologies. I now um, ha I'm working to read up on the code and working to learn the districts. Um, it, there was no intent on my end, at least as the property manager, to offend anybody. So a comment would be, I agree about the, the wood rails are just inappropriate. Um, they might consider a little bit of railing on the remainder, you know, if they're concerned with the safety of their tenants, even the single step up. We are putting, so that is a, another thing. Like, are you talking where the stones come down? Where the railings here? There. Yeah. A little railing there, and, and maybe something on those limestone. Guys, and if I'm talking too much, it's because I don't know the protocol for these meetings, so please just mm -hmm. let me know. Um, would you guys be open to the wooden railings if we um, let you guys choose any stain color you want, like whatever color you want? No. No. But you could put, you know, iron rail. If, if I can't tell from here, but it looks like safety issue too coming out of the. Yeah, you're correct. The place. We're, we're working on if figuring you put, out what to do. If we you just put wanted iron, to make sure we figured out what you guys decided before yeah, we went and did. You'd have it. to come back to, to Connor again, who might give staff approval, but. If you put iron railings attached to the brick on that side, you could not you could keep it at a minimum, and then a simple iron just to protect someone at that single step. I'm going to argue with you. Please do. We'll so get there. go ahead, and then uh, I'd like some suggestions of others around the table. If dark would something dark stain would help okay. that step more disappear or not look so uh, deck like. 
those are my comments. Thank you. Jenny? Is there a step to the right side down to the sidewalk that goes over to the driveway? No. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't, not crazy about the, uh, I mean, the deck's already a change. I'm not sure I'm crazy about a rail around the deck. I agree they probably need a lightweight black iron rail, you know, that matches maybe the one out yeah, by the sidewalk. I didn't say on they should the put side. a rail on the deck. Oh, okay. I misunderstood that. Um, uh, yeah, but the steps could use something to grab a hold of uh, coming down uh, if care was taken about, I don't know if it's better to put it in the brick or stick it in the limestone or stick it in the dirt outside it. Um, right. We've maybe sometimes, in the dirt. We've sometimes done a minimal where you just have a bar, a bar, and a bar. Mm -hmm. You know, and that could be really simple there. And it could be simple <laughs> on that side of the limestone, or you could put a simple uh, metal bar against the brick. But it, that may not work because of those columns or the railing. OK, that's all I have to say. Um, Duncan? Well, I got here late, but I I don't quite understand the purpose of the deck altogether. I understand that there was an excavation there, but why not just put the walk back in? Mm -hmm. you, you want that for me? Well, I guess it's rhetorical, but you can answer it if you can. Mm -hmm. The reason why we, so one of the things was that piece of wood that was there basically kind of fell apart whenever we peeled it up off of it. That was one of the reasons why we raised it too is because from all the moisture it was getting on the ground, it was basically just molding and deteriorating. Um, it's also, a, it was just kind of creating like a slip hazard. There was a really huge hole in between the cement. Um, and so basically we were just working on creating as little steps as possible for China and trying to make it so they don't fall down. There wasn't really that. I mean, like yeah, that's right the best I could do from that question. From where that arrow is up. Is but I guess I <laughs> I mean, once the excavation was done and the sewer pipe was replaced, why not just put the walk back in? Like you're saying lay cement? Mm -hmm. Well, or limestone. Well, I don't know what it, it looks like. It's concrete. But yeah, it's just concrete. It's probably limestone that's kept up. I mean, it seems concrete. a lot simpler solution, and it, it wouldn't change the appearance of it. It wouldn't hide the steps. It wouldn't alter the original condition. It wouldn't make it any less da any more or less dangerous. Um, I, I just, I just don't. I, th I think the solution is clumsy, to, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And and it seems such a, like such a simple fix. I mean, I mean, I could get that maybe people were complaining because during the work, and maybe immediately afterwards, it was dangerous or muddy or or whatever. And there are temporary remedies for that. But this is a this is a permanent construction that just seems mm -hmm. completely inappropriate to the architecture. I'm sorry, but that's my opinion. And the wood railings are not acceptable either. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it looks like, so the wood we're talking about, it looks like they kind of made a ramp there to probably, it looked like from the concrete landing between the stairs that they had a tow tripper to the sidewalk maybe, so they put in some wood there to ramp it and do away with it. And I see, I, I'm not a fan of the, the wooden deck that's been built. I see what he probably did is because that, see that first stair, the first riser uh, mm -hmm. to the left, how it's a lot smaller mm -hmm. and it was probably just easier for them to build. But I see what you're saying because they could have dug it out enough and gotten the same size riser that they needed and poured something out of concrete. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you're going to dig it up anyway and yeah. put it in a pipe. Just yeah. go ahead and take out what's not working and make give yeah. yourself a level sidewalk and you're problem's gone and there's no maintenance there's no repair there's I be think there for the, 100 years i think the the uh i mean the wood things in place it certainly can be easily removed if if it needed to be down the road i agree with connor it's not i don't think it's necessarily permanent i would like to have seen it smaller but it's kind of coming out at you and is kind of in your face but but are, is the coa it, requesting to make it permanent mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's not good and and then on the on the railings I on the handrails I mean yeah I'm not uh, that's just so big and, and again out of character with our, what I wondered though is is there in trying to put the metal railings 
back, they'll, you know, we'll end up, I imagine, with some concrete poured and then either a simple pipe rail or something. Could you, and I'm just asking this for my fellow board members here, could you remove the bottom board, leave the four uprights, like the, it looks like six by sixes, no. and, then, and then run a pipe, a pipe rail no. between those? No? no. Okay, because I thought that, that would, would at like least hell. lighten it, but you know. That would like hell. Yeah. yeah. Bruce, it's totally into, inappropriate. Bruce's welding would drill into those side caps and set their rail into those. Well, or, or like I said, I think you'd end up course. digging a hole, like a post hole and pouring concrete, because you don't want to split anything there if you drilled into those ex that existing concrete. Um, it would freeze them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, like I said, I think the, the, the patio, the wood deck is just really overscaled in trying to solve a, what was really a simple solution. I mean, it's not wide enough like you've made it into a deck to put chairs on. It looks like a runway now instead of a walkway. <coughs> um, but that's all my comments I've got. Um, I think this is actually covered under the Elm Heights design guidelines, section 5.4, porches and porticos, because um, they, they talk about steps and entry porches and that sort of thing. And the guidelines for porches and porticos, when you're talking about repairing or replacing them, it says, um, consider compatible new materials only if using original materials is inadvisable or unfeasible, and I think neither of those conditions fit here. I think this is ungainly and inappropriate, um, both the railing and the infill. There may be some drainage issues which they can accommodate by sloping the first bit of either limestone or a concrete sidewalk, but I think this kind of infill is you know, it's it's quick, it's easy, but it's sort of an accretional um, erosion of the architectural integrity of the building. And that is something I think we have to be very careful and guard against. So I would very much oppose leaving this as is, and I would very much like to see this um, returned to the original state um, and if they have drainage issues, which they obviously do, um, have the new work with uh, compatible original materials accommodate any future drainage issues. Um, and the, I looked at, I also looked at the, um, the Google Maps on the, the old metal railings. There were nothing special, but there were metal railings. So, you know, there's, I think, a range of metal railings that would be appropriate. Yeah, there, there's, yeah, I mean, but the, the ones that were here before that they took out were like 1960s. Yeah. It looks like the one on the top left. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, they're, they're like, but there's this sort of a, a slenderness and a, um, a delicacy that has been obliterated by putting in these wooden things. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think there's a total range of things that would be appropriate um, for replacement railings, but wood ain't one of them. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I don't have any additional comments. So would someone make a motion? Um, I move to deny this one. I move that they take it out and put back what was there before with some metal railings that are staff approved. approve a part of this uh, COA regarding the railings for the stairs um, subject and then those be replaced subject to review by the learner. Second. Mm -hmm. and the I would add that uh, a gray or darker stain be put on the on the 
patio. Absolutely. In the gray, dark family. Doug Bruce? Yes. Candace Seller? No. Jeff Golden? Yes. John Saunders? I understand. Chris Durbaum? Um, yes. Three yeses, one abstention, and one no. Motion carries. Motion carries. Thank you. I'll be. I'll get with you tomorrow about all this. Okay, just to yeah. know what I need to do. All right. I appreciate your time. Thank Absolutely. You Thank you. All right. Let's move on to COA 20-8, 812 South Morton Street. All right. Located in the McDowell uh, Local Historic District, this is a contributing building. It's an American Four Square built circa 1925. Um, the petitioners previously received approvals for some alterations to the structure. Um, several months ago. This is a new COA for an addition to the rear. Um, the addition is to, going to be to the rear of the home. Uh, the addition will serve as living space. It will also serve to connect the, the historic structure to the currently detached garage. Um, this is some of the petitioners. This is a better plan so you can see it. Um, staff recommends approving uh, conditioned approval of COA 28. Uh, staff finds that the location of the addition to the rear is uh, appropriate. Staff finds that the addition is appropriately scaled um, and is subordinate to the primary structure. Uh, staff finds that the cement board lap siding, standing seam, metal roof, and fenestration on the addition is also compatible with the uh, primary historic structure. Um, however, staff finds that there's not enough differentiation to distinguish between the historic building and the addition um, as currently proposed. Um, staff recommends approval if the uh, petitioner agrees to uh, differentiate either maybe insetting the addition um, so it's not run along a contiguous wall um, or a differentiation is accomplished with some use of siding or other art art architectural features uh, at the junction where the two uh, come together. Um, so. If staff finds that if the petitioner could meet that differentiation request, then approval should be given. Okay, and the petitioner's with us? Great, thank you. Okay, do you have any additional comments to make? No, we'll wrap and answer questions. Great, thank you. Jeff, do you have questions? No. Chris? Yeah, would staff consider if it was set back enough so that the overhang terminated with, uh, yep. with the siding, like a, yeah, a foot it, or something. Yeah, some s slight inset from the building wall of the primary structure. Yeah, that's I think would, would, would do it. That's all I got. Jenny? Yeah, something, some uh, trim board that matches the front, something, some break there. Otherwise, it goes ranch style on the bottom, four square on the top, because you have a long very long rectangle going on there. Um, but yeah, other than that, I guess that wasn't a question. So uh, yeah, I guess I have no questions. Sorry. OK. Duncan? I don't have any questions. No yeah. questions. Sam? Um, would staff and petitioner also be willing to consider just a break in trim, like a vertical trim board there? Absolutely. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes. Should we move on to comments? Um, I don't agree with the inside. I think the piece of trim would do this nicely. It's differentiated enough with the, the, the level of, the, of this property. So that's what I would support. I agree. Mm -hmm. Jenny? It should match the front width trim on the front. <coughs> So it should come all the way down from the top corner down if they're going to do the trim and probably on the back corner to trim it out correctly. Thank you. Duncan? No. Doug? No. Sam? I don't have any. So let's get a motion. We approve the COA uh, subject to uh, staff approval of so the trim that we talked about. Second. Second. Abstain. Sam Seller? Yes. Jeff Golden? Yes. 
John Saunders. Yes. It's Chris Durbaum. Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Plante. Thank you, JT. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming in this evening. Great location. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to COA 20-9, 410 West Smith Avenue, and the Greater Prospect Hill. Uh, this is a, actually an ADU um, grandfathered in uh, on a, a lot that the primary structure is actually on Madison, uh, but this uh, ADU is given its own address, 410 West Smith. Um, and as uh, John said, it's located in Greater Prospect Hill. This structure was given its individual rating of contributing on the uh, latest historic resource survey. Um, it's a little unusual. Well, I can't say that. Sometimes ADUs are given ratings and sometimes they're not. This one was actually rated and, and noted on the survey individually. Um, the petitioner is asking for several alterations, some pretty major ones. You can. Well, here's the current structure here. It's in poor condition. Um, this is what they proposed drawing. So you can see that they want to replace the gable roof with a shed style roof, um, replace the siding with fiber, cement, board, and batten, uh, replace and reorient some of the windows. They're going to be using uh, aluminum clad wood awning windows. Uh, you can see here some examples. Um, yeah, and I was looking at the Greater Prospect Hill design guidelines, and um, I, I couldn't really find where the guidelines differentiate between primary and accessory structures when it comes to alterations from the pu public right of way. Um, so I didn't find a whole lot of guidance in there. Uh, I did look at Sanborn map, and I determined that there was a uh, structure there when the primary building was built uh, in the 30s. So this is certainly sort of from the same era of construction. However, that structure was much smaller. And in talking to the petitioner, he also believes that that structure that was original to the, the primary building was probably enlarged at some stage in the and maybe the uh, 40s or the 50s. Guys, huh? You think, it, you think it was smaller on the map? <clears throat> yeah. Like it was the same, like, I think it's only like 300 square feet right now. It, it, yeah. It's even smaller on the map. Yeah. Did, did you uh, see really? I looked at it, but I didn't really like measure it or zoom up or anything. Yeah, I mean, it looks compared. You know, it, it looks much smaller. Enlarged it. Um, yeah, and then did, did I include a copy of the same one maps in the packet? Yes. Okay. So um, yeah, we think it's from the same era of construction, um, and it's a contributing structure. And these are pretty major differences. So um, staff would find that these changes would likely render it non-contributing, just because it's such a radical roof change to a shed. Um, I don't find the board and batten necessarily horrible for the ADU, the outbuilding. Um, so staff would defer to HPC on this. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Does, uh, do you have any additional comments for us? Mm, not really. I mean, I'm open. I'm not, I'm not like totally dead set on that design necessarily, but I don't, I feel like it would, although it's a lot, like the shed roof is a lot more modern uh, my plan t is is to have all the trim details and things kind of fitting with um, the dish the, his the main house and with historic houses. So uh, to just I guess whatever you guys right. do you have any if you find it really offensive okay. um, I'm totally open to different ideas. Okay. Jeff, questions? Yeah, so I kind of heard you answer this question. The change to the roof, is there some other reason besides? Um, besides like getting south facing sun and like not more really room inside insulation or? detail and um, and also like if you see how that roof has been like sliced and like jacked up to make room to like walk a person inside mm -hmm. <laughs> and having the I mean it didn't even have it doesn't even have gutters on it but I, even with a gutter it would be kind of an ugly and awkward way to enter um, a building great thanks that's it I guess got six foot Eve <laughs> 
Chris? Yeah, I've been inside that. It's really short, really squat. I understand how that makes it livable. Questions, no questions. Jenny? Is uh, underneath that, is that car siding? Vertical car siding? Um, yeah, I think it's T111 underneath it is some sort of a vertical side. Like yeah. <clears throat> Once we change something that much, then you'd say it'd be non-contributing. And is it of a style then? It would even, if somebody had come forward and say, I want to build this little building, would that have been a style that was acceptable, the one that's presented? Okay. And that was my only question. Those are the kinds of questions that you're supposed to answer. <laughs> yeah, well, they we haven't got to the comments. I, I think yet. you're going the right. I mean, I mean, I asked. I had the same question about the under siding. You know, the, the siding that's obviously been covered up. I mean, mm -hmm. traditionally, in these in these situations, where they've been altered, these buildings have been altered. I mean, I think Connor's asking too the right question about. Uh, this is leading to a question, but uh, about. Um, whether this is the building that we're see, actually seeing on the Sanborn or not. And it's not, it, lo it almost looks to me like the orientation is different, so I, I don't know that I think it is. But in any case, usually go back and look at a historic building and say, okay, well, how was this thing originally built? And you skin back that T111 and you see what's there and you try to determine if that was original siding. It wouldn't be unlikely for it to be car siding. Car siding comes along in the early 20th century when they're lining freight cars. I mean, that's what it's, that's what it, that's why it's called car siding. Um, you know, try to take your clues from the building that's there because I don't think we're gonna want it to lose its contributing status. Yeah, I'm a little confused about the, like, uh, the, uh, 1926 map showing it being smaller because looking at the framing inside like most of the framing is really rotted out and has like a lot of termite and carpenter ant damage and like the way the like the water penetration of this place over the years has been so crazy yeah uh, that like the framing is like cardboard or you know it's like styrofoam a lot yeah. of it. but um, the way that it had been framed is uh, it looks like a lot of old sheds, like kind of like a hybrid post and beam, yeah. you know, uh, skeleton, but then they had like kind of Tetris infill to <laughs> do drywall and stuff later on. So I feel like the, some of the framing looks like the structure was that size originally. Yeah, I mean, post I mean, and beam framing wouldn't be unusual in a building like that, at yeah, that era, in that era. Around. <laughs> I'm trying to. Uh, I, the foundation was definitely added. Like I, I don't know what it sat on originally, but when they put plumbing in there, they definitely dug out a little crawl space to deal with the plumbing and put some six-inch concrete block foundation under it. And I imagine that was like in the '50s or something when they turned it into like a dwelling. Yeah, it was probably off the piers. Can you bring that up? That area. Can I make it bigger? I can't, so as much as this zooms in. I can try and find it on Google Maps and it might zoom in a little better for us. Anyway, my question was, <laughs> you started to answer it, maybe you've answered it completely, which was what else can you see in there that would give us some idea of its age and origin. Yeah, I, I believe it was it was built like as a an outbuilding or a shed. Yeah. Like probably in the nineteen twenties and uh, then they converted it into like a efficiency studio probably in the nineteen fifties based on uh, the the way that they had kind of Put it up on that foundation. It's like two core block, 
and some of the other old stuff was like kind of fit, could have been 50s and then they kind of just piled laminate and crap up on top of the surfaces until it, you know, yeah. lost even more square footage. So I think that, I think that that uh, car siding, I think that probably is original to whatever the shed was. Like, I, I don't, it's not salvageable, but that's the... Well, yeah. We don't really know that. We can't see it. Yeah, that's true. All right, that's all the questions I have. Doug? No questions. Jeff, Jeff asked mine about the roof. Sam? Uh, what siding is the uh, main building? Uh, it's got horizontal like a uh, redwood lap siding that's like five inch. Not yet much. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Which I, I like, I would honestly prefer that, but when I started drawing that shed roof, for whatever reason, the board and batten just did, like the, the horizontal just didn't look right. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Uh, against that slope. Thank you. I don't have a question. Everybody's beat me to it. <laughs> Comments, Jeff? I don't know. I mean, I would like it to, to have that same roof line, but I get this point about it. Well, I could foot. keep that same, I could keep a, <clears throat> like a similar gable situation, Brown except just raise it up so that you, so you've right. had enough headroom. Like for some reason in my like like the the sh the face the side that faces Smith, which is the the gutter side right there mm -hmm. or the eave, um, I I just imagine walking up to the gable being better. But in terms of like rotating it 180 degrees, I don't necessarily have a good argument for that. I just. I, mean, I, I, I prefer. I like paint. your design. Yeah. I don't think it's appropriate. Yeah. I think the, the, keeping this as close to what it was is a better course of action. And if you can save, you know, I would take the T111 off and see what's there. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing you won't be able to save it. Because okay. would you um, say I, um, I, I remodel it with this same roof pitch on a gable? raise it up so that it's a little bit more adequate interior space. Uh, would you suggest that I do a horizontal siding or try to keep the structure as a vertical, as like a I mean, I, I, car siding existing? First thing I'll do is take the T111 off see and see if what you can do. Yeah. And then uh, maybe mimic what's there. Yeah. If you have to replace it. Okay. That's my comment. Yeah, about a block away from here, we rebuilt what was kind of a shed, garage, oh, yeah. outbuilding. I was working on that other house, like right behind oh, it, right yeah. by the mini split, you know, right. that Matt was doing. Yeah. Right. So I would, I agree, as much work as you do on the first plan, you could simply raise the roof so it makes sense. Because you hit your head, you would just go in the door. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's, that was like, my first design yeah. because of simplicity, because of, uh, you know, the, the running the rainwater back to the gutter on the back of the house and running it out. But that's not really historically applicable stuff. That's just me being lazy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then we used, we reused, I mean, we re got new car siding and rebuilt the exterior that yeah. way. Or or Because I would be totally up for that, you know, to like, uh, to try to save the car siding, to, to put new car siding if that stuff's no good. I've been in there and I don't think that'll be savable. But yeah, it's like when I, okay, when I, I pulled off the, um, it had like this real awful ranch casing around the doors. When I pulled that ranch casing off, it was just like a nest of termites behind it. Mm -hmm. And the way that the crawl spaces, the, the, the way that it sits on the grade, the crawl space fills up with like a feet of water. Right. And between that and, and the roof and everything, and the like hoarder person who yeah. was the tenant when we got the place, uh, it was, you know, 
is pretty decimated, like a lot of the wood, edible stuff. Right, the idea of the building is what's salvageable, and if you recreate it yeah. taller, it'll fit. Jenny? Mm. Uh, is that a well top in front there, or just a stone leg there? In I'm sorry, front, what? In front of the front the door, uh -huh. there's a square piece of limestone there. Is that a well top, <coughs> or is oh. that a... You know, I think it's just a, I think there's just like some pieces of limestone laid down as like a sidewalk up to the door. I haven't actually dug that piece up and tried to move it, but I, I seriously, I don't think it's a well. There's a cistern in the other house, a brick cistern. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, I think there's other ways to, to clear your door and stuff like that rather than going to a modern design. Yeah. Uh, it's not I'm that I mind the modern design. Yeah, it's yeah. just not. It would look really. I think it would look odd in, in this neighborhood, in this historic district. Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> you might have to come back. How about, how about <laughs> roof, roof pitch though? Um, I think you could probably put a little pop shed roof up there if the like de other design. Or yeah, or not, or you could do a little pink in front that would make it look kind of more cottagey, but it would be less sheddy. <laughs> um, it raises the roof. Make the walls taller. Yeah, make yeah. the walls taller. That don't help. I just use. wasn't sure how sturdy his walls are going to be if he, if there is. Baddies he's talking he's about. Gonna well, he's going to rebuild. It's basically going to be a rebuilt building. It's, yeah. it's pretty bad. Um, so, okay. That's my, my only comment. There's less there if there is a, a well top there, you know, you should avoid it. Too. I know you'll probably put a sidewalk in or something like that. You mean safety wise? Don't <laughs> jump down the well. Safety <laughs> and removing it. <laughs> well, we have had. Uh, <laughs> Oh, fall yeah. into the old wells oh, when they straight across <laughs> the top of them. Well, when I found uh, the I cistern. I believe Mr. Burnham lost a uh, piece of equipment in Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. Can the public make a comment? Certainly. Car siding into the ground is a wicking problem. Mm -hmm. It's an open end grain. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why just contributing yeah. to some of the things that you're seeing. Yeah. So may, maybe there's a hybrid of pulling some materials off the house and you might be able to saw cut the car siding a few feet off the ground and save the rest of it, yeah, for, exa for example. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, that and then maybe do something different. Mm -hmm. Just new car siding is not gonna last at all uh, with open end grain yeah, yeah. near the ground. I've you just, gotta pull it up. Just, just, just as yeah. a comment. I think I'd probably know. try to run it into like a drip. Yeah, you need something. Over like a uh, yeah. trim board. Like and a then horizontal trim board. And you do what you can to seal that in grain because it's just yeah. a sponge. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you, Mark. Thanks. Uh, Duncan? Yeah, I think the trick here is to. I mean, it sounds from what Chris is saying and what you're saying that it, it the, the building's pretty far gone, so. Assuming you're gonna have to reframe. Yeah, and that's part of the reason that I like, I came up with a like, totally different design. Yeah. Just because I know how much I'm gonna have to rebuild and. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that, but. But um, We I, don't want to lose the contributing nature of yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Oh, uh, and so, at this point, it's like the most, the the best solution will be the one that looks the most like the original building did probably yeah, totally. and, <laughs> and imitates the materials at least in intention if not in fact so as opposed to your your redesign i mean i think at that point you come in here and ask us to tear it down and then get permission for your new design yeah you know what i mean because because but if you're intent on saving this then i think you have to do it we have to look at the same way of saving it as we would at any historic building. Sure. If you can justify that it's too far gone to save, then we consider that. <coughs> Doug? Yeah, I think Duncan makes a great point. Um, that's what I was thinking is, is that it's almost like you're, you're asking for a demo permit in yeah. a way without really asking for it if, it, uh -huh. if it's as bad a shape as it sounds like. And normally we don't, get a ch an opportunity to to see the insides of a lot of these structures so having you know Chris having seen it before as well helps out um, I think 
while I like your shed roof design and as an outbuilding, I think it's appropriate. But I think for this site, uh, given the the contributing nature of the design that's there, I think keeping that vocabulary is important. Yeah. I think you've seen this group is willing to say, okay, let's add another foot in height if that's what it takes to to clear the door and get you the headroom you need. But I think staying with the kind of roof pitch that you've got here, but raising it, um, you know, I think we're also pretty lucky that you're wanting to try to do something with this because in my eyes, this structure's pretty far gone. So we're trying to kind of recreate it, but we're also trying to keep that vocabulary or feeling of what that neighborhood is, what this building is to the existing building. So trying to keep with those characteristics is about all we've got left on this structure and probably is what is yeah, totally. important. That's all my comments. Sam. Yeah, I think if the petitioner is willing to stay within the footprint, stay with the roof slope, stay with the exterior siding and, you know, in a sort of a loosey-goosey way with the fenestration, um, I'm perfectly happy to get a staff-approved version of this going. Yeah, I agree with my fellow petitioners on this. So this is enough change that should we just deny it and have them come back? Or you could make a motion um, approval based on staff review and approval of the bomb design. Me taking into what you said today about keeping the roof shape and, and that mm -hmm. into consideration. So or you can. Or, would, or continue. And we can just continue with the more. with the petitioner's permission we can continue well, we could do that I mean but it's like I, I don't know that it, it merits that I mean I don't necessarily want to hold it up because I think there's good will here and I think he's trying to do the right thing and if Connor's looking over his shoulder I have I don't have an issue with it and if my fellow commissioners would agree with that I would think I wouldn't think it would slow him down to to come back in two weeks with some semblance of what he's going to do, and then, then we would still, if it isn't settled, Connor could oversee. But right now, it's there's no real design. We just said make it look sort of like that. <laughs> you can lay out some rough parameters of what you'd like to see. We've already done that to a certain extent. I, I move that we approve the COA, uh, uh, keeping in mind the comments made by the commissioners tonight and that the building um, uh, at least mimics the style, mimics the style uh, that exists now, subject to Connor's review of the new design. I don't think that's it's not going to work. Enough. Enough. I mean, you're approving a plan that he's put on a piece of paper for one thing, and we've all said that we don't like it. <laughs> so, so I think I think your point about continuing, at least he comes back with a plan that's based on maybe further investigation, pull off some of that plywood, let him make the decision. He knows what we want him to do, but that way he can create a scope of work that, that fits that model, and then you're approving what's actually going to happen. Because otherwise, we don't have any. Question Can we just say no on that, but come back and do staff approval with taking our comments in mind? Yes, that's an option. Petitioner has something to say. Well, what I was going to say is if I agree, you know, I'm keeping the same uh, the footprint, and if I agree to keep the, uh, <clears throat> I think it's a 6 and 12 roof pitch, same roof orientation, and uh, just raise it enough to have a door trimmed out that someone can walk through um, and totally scrap that other drawing that I did um, and I agree to um, remove the T111 salvage that material if it's salvageable or um, replace with equivalent uh, vertical siding um, and then be in touch with Connor with, and like draw a final plan, would that be acceptable? I would think um, if you do all that stuff and then just come back in two weeks, that'd be the no, best. Two, two weeks, I wasn't sure it was a month. Continue. What's that? Until next week. I said next week. meeting. Yeah, our next meeting. Which is in two weeks. <coughs> yeah, okay. Are you okay with that, Brian? Sure, that's fine. Or we'll just deny it. <laughs> <laughs>
is what I move to continue it then to mm -hmm. the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Right. I just did. Give me the second. Okay. Doug Bruce. Yes. Ken Seller. Yes. Jeff Golden. Yes. John Saunders. Yes. Chris Sturbaum. Yes. Motion carries. Thanks for right, thank around. you. Yeah, thank please. you very much. Thanks for working on that bill. I'd like yeah. to sit around. Just sure. You don't have to leave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brian did an amazing job on the front bill. He did. Yeah. yeah. An incredible job. Okay. All right. Let's move on to uh, COA 20-11. All right. This is the uh, proposed new construction on uh, the lot that is... 1009 West 9th Street. We previously approved demolition of a historic structure, so this is the new construction coming at you. Petitioner Mark Cornett. Um, this is the near west side conservation district. This would be a new construction of a single family residential home. There are no variances needed. Um, stylistically, uh, it's similar to an American Foursquare. Uh, setback will match the setback of the previous house on the lot within a few inches. Um, you can see here at the site plan, the orange is the footprint of the houses that were there before. Uh, materials list, foundation, uh, CMU, siding, painted cement board lap, windows. Uh, HPC can pick those, yay. Primary roof, asphalt shingles, <laughs> porch roof, asphalt shingle or uh, standing seam metal. So Mark, from what I understand, has given us a few options to choose from. Um, he's kind of open to as far as the stylistic detailings, you know, fenestration, things like that. Some of the like the porch roof material can change. Um, but what we're really looking at are the, is the bigger picture of the house here. Uh, and staff finds that the height, the scale, the massing, the setback of the proposed structure is compatible uh, for the district. Um, staff finds that the proposed design differentiates itself from the district's historic buildings through fenestration, the contrast of upper level <coughs> siding, and the foundation material. Um, and staff finds that the proposed design meets the compatible yet differentiated standard required for new construction in the conservation district and therefore recommends approval. Okay. Um, can we consider both these COAs together? 2012 as well because the houses are yes. next door to each other. And it's the same builder. Would that be acceptable? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, Jeff. Oh, actually, Mark, do you have additional information uh, for us? Where we can get yes, questions? thanks. Thanks for letting us come today and present this information. The owner of Raynard Cross is here with me as well, and is happy to answer any questions. A couple of things I'd like to mention about the summary is that. We did list a variety of window types, fiberglass, vinyl, clad wood. So um, we, what, what, I was, what I was really trying to do is give options. The looks will be there. It'll be a double hung, it'll be a traditional proportioned window, et cetera. But the porch, the porch variety, the siding variety, whether it's board and batten in the top third, whether it's two different sizes of clabbered, whether we do a shed porch or shingle infill up in, in the upper third, we would re we're really looking for permission to run with it. And as long as you don't find any of the particular options objectionable, we would like to resolve it internally. Uh, that's, so that's why we wanted to show a, a variety of, of you know, porch railings, porch roof styles, um, top third, uh, whether it's uh, shingle infill or or, um, or board and batten infill. Those are all patterns that you see in the, in the historic core neighborhoods for four squares. And um, so that's really what we were trying to present there. We, would, we, we will make them distinct from each other. They won't, wouldn't, for example, both have hip roofs. They wouldn't both have flat board picket rails on the front. One might be a, a turned uh, you know, design. So. That's really what we wanted to emphasize, that we are going to present uh, two different styles. Um, and I'm talking too much about it, but that was really the goal, is say, hey, you guys trust us. These, these looks are OK. We're going to pick a couple and run with it. All right. Thank you, Mark. No question. 
Yeah, would you comment about the shed roof? That just doesn't quite look right to me. Well, the, the, the shed roof. Shed porch. The yeah. shed roof porch is um, maybe a little bit unusual in this particular case. We were looking at options. We have the hip as well and the gable. If that's one that you would reject, of course, we would accept that as well. That's why we wanted to show um, three or four different uh, different versions. Right. And did you show a shingle second upper story? Yeah, there's one. There's a shingle version of that, too. And it would be the same materials painted, of course, um, as the yeah, as right. the other lists. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are my questions. I'll have comments. One of the... It's offset. The porch is... Is that porch offset? Yes. The, the porch oh, yeah, is offset see. intentionally as right. opposed to the sy symmetrical. And again, since they're going to sit next to each other, mm -hmm. we were trying to refer them a little bit to the... There's an unimproved alley that sits between the houses, unfortunately, so they're on distinct individual properties, um, So which puts the houses a little farther apart than they might be. Because when you go over there, it just looks like it's a yard. It's a, because the alley's not improved. But at some point in the future, you know, uh, future homeowners might select to improve that right of way and get to garages in the back, for example, mm -hmm. maybe ADUs in the future, uh, any of those possibilities. So right. um, you can see it's, you know, right now that strip between is, is actually just grassed in. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to relate the houses a little bit to each other. Oh yeah, that explains um, the offset yeah. of the housing even. Again, not mandatory, but just something we were suggesting. Right, thank you. Good. Jenny? Um, I see a lot of uh, four squares in a lot of areas in town. I can't place any in that area, though. Was there a reason we that you went with a four square for that? There's area? a four square on eighth at the dead end, just yeah. past the just past the um, Girls Inc. There's a okay. four square at the corner of Seventh and Fairview. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a four square at on Oak Street. Why on was? Oak. Mm -hmm. There's there are there are some in the neighborhood. It's not the dominant pattern. Mm -hmm. But in talking to Connor, in terms of not absolutely replicating history here, right. we picked maybe one that's lesser represented in the neighborhood mm -hmm. intentionally. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. That's my question. So all these options, you have a problem making up your mind about how you want it? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to give the commission the chance to weigh in and say don't build two identical houses. Okay, it was, don't strictly, it was simply that yeah. that level of discussion. I mean, normally, and you know this, that we like for people to come to us with a design and we can comment on it appropriately, prove it or not approve it, and then we have a documented design that if, if for some reason it doesn't get built that way, we've got recourse. I'll pick two right now. Well, I, I wish you would, actually, okay. because I, I don't personally have a problem with what you're doing there, except that I think for the purposes of, of this commission's work, we, we ought to be, you know, we ought to expect a finished proposal on new construction that so that there aren't many surprises and so that Let's go back to the photos. So you don't come back to us and say, well, you said these are okay. <laughs> well, let's go back to the two images uh, that are colored as part of the original. Like, let's, let's pick that one. Let's and do a gable. And what's the upper? Is that shingle upper? That is, a, that is board and batten, mm -hmm. which is a oh. typical uh, detail. Uh -huh. And then let's go to the other front page on 10,017. And let's do that. Okay. We're happy to... I think Connor did a great job in picking those two. <laughs> so do we have a materials list for each of those options? Yes. I see. I'm looking. Yeah. yeah. Don't pay attention to the garage. Uh, right. So are they both asphalt shingle then? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay. So I, no one question I have. No questions. Sam? No questions. No questions. Comments? Mm hmm. Um, sure. Uh, I trust Mark. He's a little great. I'm my dog. I like the four squares. Um, I like the idea that we're adding to a vernacular that, that's not. Super represented in that area. Um, 
and they look different than what's around them, which is good. So I don't support, and I like the ones you picked. Chris? Right, I support the two that were selected. I think Foursquare is a good design. I like to use split face CMU because it ages and looks like limestone a little bit. And that's, that'd be my suggestion. Jenny? Uh, as for the, the shed roof, I do know at least one four square with a shed roof on the front, and it is original. Uh, it was an early four square, uh, and they played a little bit more <coughs> around with it then. Um, I like it. Uh, the board and batten throws me on the one. Uh, it makes it feel a little more, a little modern, uh, especially because it seems taller and narrower, and that brings it up even taller and narrower than a four square usually is. The proportion's a little off for four squares. If you're going for four square, I'm not saying you have to have exact four square. I'm just saying that brings it up higher and makes it look less like one. So. That that's kind of the goal of new construction is you want to differentiate in a way well, like yeah. the vertical side, which you wouldn't find on a historic building. Yeah. So I'm just saying, you know, if he's just the board and batten, I, I, I can of. identify that with like a really old house or uh, 50s, 60s. So it just throws me on the four square. Very good. I don't have any comment. Doug? Oh, I think uh, I'm glad you you picked two. I see what Duncan was was saying. Um, I think this is what we would love to have as infill. So I think it's perfect. Um, I think they're I think they're going to be a great addition to the neighborhood. Um, only thing I guess I would ask because you've asked us is, I mean, what's your preference for windows? Again, because we have got to call out something on it. Yeah. Uh, if you if you accept the well the list didn't make it on the uh, materials list but I but when I submitted if you look at if you look at the petitioner statement the list is there <coughs> so um, we, we, we suggest uh, solid vinyl solid fiberglass or metal uh, clad wood and um, I'm actually we're having a lot of luck right now with full fiberglass mm -hmm. And we can get colors, mm -hmm. and uh, Marvin makes them, and it's a good line of window, and they're they're also affordable and easy to maintain from a homeowner's perspective. I'm actually having some trouble with wood clad, um, with failures, and replacing sashes. They're not they don't seem to be holding up as as well as we would like. And in this case, the wood, of course, would only be visible from the inside, so that would be a more of a homeowner visual, visual as opposed to a, um, a facade visual. Um, so if you would accept the fiberglass, we would certainly yeah, prefer that's, that. I, I, that's what I was going to say is I think the, the to me, I'm not a fan of the vinyl, um, and maybe that's just a throwback to some of the early vinyl that the seemed to be failed. pretty cheap yeah, and yeah. failed and, and would twist or rack in the when it got hot. Uh, the fiberglass stuff has been fantastic. Um, and I just wanted to bring that up so that the, as we vote on something, I mean, my preference would be a fiberglass window, which I think would be fine. So other than that, I think you've done a great job. Aren't those even paintable in the long run? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. but they've opened up a bunch of colors. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have, we're not limited to white uh, anymore. So. That's all I've got. Thank you, um, Just to reiterate, yeah, fiberglass is, I'm, I'm fan would you Connor flip back and forth between the two pretty colored ones that we like um, so I think the danger of showing us a bunch of different ones is is we're like oh I like this on that and oh I like this on that um, but if you look at the fenestration on these two different buildings you've got almost exactly the same fenestration on the upper and lower stories you've got a double uh, double hung on the porch next to a door and then You've got a single small one over the door and a larger double hung over the doubles. Um, I actually find the, the there's another couple that you did which have a, a pair of double hungs over the double hungs, which I find more elegant, like that fenestration combination 
is a little bit more elegant. And I think if you're doing two houses next to each other, I'd like to... on one, maybe? Or? Yeah, I'd like to see one on one and one on another, just so it's not like a carbon copy of the same thing right next to each other. Point taken. Um, well, you don't want the shed room on. Well, no, I mean, the sh I, 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 I get what Jenny's saying about the shed roof. I don't mind the shed roof, but I get what people are saying. And I, you know, my, I've got a four square with a hip roof and a hip roof porch. And I think it's much more common, and I think people will freak out less about it. So, you know, I'm, you know, I love, if you're going to do like a standing seam metal roof, do it at a low slope. So, it, you know, it makes sense from a materialistic standpoint. Um, but if you're not going to, you know, if you're going to do anything, you're going to do 3 and 12 or uh, more, leave it as a comp shingle and save yourself some money. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's, that's one thing. So if you're willing to, like, differentiate the fenestration, I would be most grateful. Um, I would accept a, a recommendation to put a double over a double on one of the two. And you could even, like, the siding transition might be preferable to the... That's vertical. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm sorry. Can, no, it's, no, can, no. Can you go back to that image? Can I, I want to weigh in on that before you go too far, if you don't mind, with, Sam. If you, oh, yeah. You, have it. Um, go back to the gray one with the gable. Mm -hmm. the, the porch infill of the, of, it's not board and batten. That's actually, and I should have picked a different color. That's a shadow. So that is an open web porch. Yeah, you'll no, that's, see the that's gorgeous. Yeah. You'll see the rafters. It's yep. a dental detail yeah, no, more I, than... That's what I did to the back yeah, of my house yeah. so I could put in yeah. a whole house. So thing. there's a reason for <laughs> the board and batten, the open volume of the porch the, the porch gable, mm -hmm. and then the narrow pickets on the, on the railing. It's all of a piece. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to emphasize those as a system mm -hmm. of detail. No, I think that's totally appropriate. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That, that was the reason that that one looks specifically like that. Yeah. And I apologize if the gray in the gable matches the clabber or the board and batten. It shouldn't match the same color. Uh, I, yeah, I've got no issues with that. I mean, uh, it, it's the when you go back to the standing seam on the front, yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah. I just want to see, like, if you don't have the same fenestration from yeah. the left house to the right house. The other thing that um, I encourage you to look at is at the corner, you've got like, it looks like a, maybe a one by four, or one by six trim that goes all the way up two stories. And I would like to see that stopped at where you're transitioning your materials. Go to the other elevation. Yeah, so yeah, that. I wanna see that instead of what I saw before on the previous picture. Can we do that on one but not both? Well, I mean, Again, to you, differentiate the well, two? well, you've got two different siding materials, right? Yeah. So if you've got a board and batten on one, do a board and batten trim detail on the upper bit instead of a lap siding trim detail on the upper bit, just so you're saying, okay, this is what happens on the bottom part and this is what happens on the top part. Yeah. Does that make I, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I drew it that way because of that on that one. Yeah. Just to show, again, a variety of options there. Okay. But you know, other than that, I think these are incredibly well detailed, incredibly well scaled. They're, you know, the site placement is perfect. I've got, you know, thank you. And you. <laughs> I, I'm in agreement. You know, I like the two houses that you chose, and I like the additions that the commission has added to it. And I think you got a good project there, Mark. Thank you. So. So I think at this stage we kind of have a Frankenstein of <laughs> a house. And maybe the motion could clarify exactly which bits and pieces we're going to assemble on our final products because I'm, I'm kind of confused right now myself about what or maybe the best thing to do is to ask the petitioner to incorporate the feedback he's heard tonight and come back to us with two plans that he 100% is going to use so we're open. I, th I think we've narrowed it down greatly with the two images of the, ten the 1009 and the 1017. Mm -hmm. And then we could make a couple of modifications. The double upper floor window to stack would be appropriate for this house. Mm -hmm. It's going to interfere with the gable on the other house. Mm -hmm. So we need, to, we need to recognize that. And um, beyond that, we can um, alter the trim above the water table line at the upper two thirds and bring it down to a, a four inch instead of a six inch? Well, it's just like where, the, yeah, 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 the, yeah, it's at the transition break. I think it. those are really the only two things in the fiberglass windows. Yeah. And, and I think there's three points and we're ready to go. Okay. We bring it back if we need to, but I, I don't, I think it's 
pretty straightforward. Move to approve what those specifications. <laughs> okay. I'll list them. I, it's not my. Yeah, if you guys approve this. Great. Okay. There is no second. Me. Question: Any any concern about split phase versus smooth? You want smooth instead of split? I. I I'm sorry. I well, I, I have had a lot of trouble with split phase. It holds so much water because the block has been split open that we would rather paint the foundation than use split face. Can you get like I don't I don't think you can, but you can't get we like we got a motion out here. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no. We're considering an amendment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just answering questions at Chris's question. Sorry. Okay. You can't get Bruce? integral color split yes. face at this point, can you? I didn't think so. Sam Seller? Yes. Jeff Golden? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Chris Durbaum? Yes. Motion carries. Connor, I will send you an email with those three points, just to make it for the record. Thank you. For, for me, for us. Right that into the from COA. Us. <laughs> yeah, from us. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to COA 20-13, 642 North Madison Street. All right, uh, this is the kiln building, the um, adaptive reuse project for the kiln that the HPC did a courtesy review for at the last meeting. Um, just a quick overview, the kiln building is located in the Shower Brothers Furniture Factory Historic District. Um, the adaptive reuse of this building is part of a larger initiative that's been going on for decades to utilize Historic Showers campus um, to contribute to the success of the city's proposed trades district. Um, the adaptive reuse of this kiln is to convert it to office slash commercial space. Uh, there's going to be a conversion of the original bay openings into glass framed entrances, uh, approximately two story rooftop addition. Uh, materials we're looking at aluminum clad pillow lifestyle windows, standing seam metal siding, flush panel metal siding, wood soffit material, and some reuse of original kiln brick. Um, so, uh, Staff recommendation is to defer to the HPC with the following comments. Uh, staff identifies the following character defining features should be preserved. Uh, use of red brick, uh, five bays on the, on the west elevation. Uh, the outline of the rectangular recessed walls uh, that you can see feature um, pilasters in between them um, and with uh, some corbeling here too. Uh, so those are really the, the if there is character defining features, those are it for the kiln building and those features should be uh, maintained and preserved. Staff finds that the size and the massing of the rooftop addition uh, overwhelms the kiln's uh, proportions and profile and that rooftop additions are generally not advisable for historic one story structures, uh, especially when the addition adds more than a story in height. Uh, staff finds that the above mentioned issues are somewhat mitigated uh, by the fact that the petitioner has set back uh, the additional levels um, from the primary elevation of the kiln. It helps soften that visual impact of the, the rooftop addition. Uh, the kiln's roof is not a character defining feature, so a rooftop addition will not result in the loss of such a feature. Um, the recognition, and this is important, that any adaptive reuse uh, project of this building that seeks to utilize the building for commercial office space is going to demand some severe alterations uh, because the kiln was originally constructed to dry lumber and not house a modern workforce. Um, so ultimately staff finds that after review of the historic district design guidelines, which I included in your pack and I hope you read, and federal preservation literature, the design as proposed uh, would not be approved. Uh, so if this was a seeking federal rehabilitation tax credits, that with the current design, it's not gonna get that. Um, However, staff also recognizes that the adaptive reuse of the kiln is a unique and very difficult challenge uh, because of the building's design, its limited size, uh, that any reuse of this building to meet modern commercial needs will require creative solutions um, that inevitably are gonna come at the expense of some of its historic materials, features, and form. So staff would hope that uh, the commission keeps an open mind um, with some of these uh, changes that we're seeing. Uh, so the, the petitioner uh, had a courtesy review. He took some of your comments. Uh, you can see that they've lessened the overhang of this top here. Um, he's cleaned up 
So we're taking a tour here. Let's start on the <laughs> southwest. So you're walking along Madison, you see it here. Uh, now we see just the west elevation. Um, and now we're seeing the north elevation. So if you're driving down 11th, this is what you're going to see. Uh, now we're going to see uh, the northeast elevation. Um, so you can see he's now changed the design to kind of continue this feature of kind of the brick bays to, to continue around it and use of that red brick, uh, which I think is a, it's a great, great change, um, as well as kind of cleaned up some of the elements here that the HPC found quite troubling last time. And this is maybe some proposed artwork showing the uh, outline of the Historic Showers campus and where the kiln fits in regards to all of that, which I think is a really nice touch because mm -hmm. uh, it tells the story of the Showers campus. Um, and here we go. This is from the alley, um, so southeast elevation of it. And that's a site plan. Uh, so staff would defer to HPC. Doesn't have an official recommendation. Thank you, Kevin. Um, additional information for us. Well, I'll just. Uh, my name is Alex Crowley. I'm the director of economic sustainable development, and it's been our department that's uh, driving the trades district project um, forward as much as we can. Um, I, what I can tell you is, is, as you know, this is a critical building in a 25-year project. Um, and we are treading very lightly in terms of who we want to work with on each of these buildings that are being converted. So the mill, w we did ourselves with, obviously we didn't design it, but I mean that was a project that the city drove. Um, and you know we were very careful there. I think it turned out really great. We're, we're cognizant of the proximity of the kiln to the mill. What we like about what's being proposed is the, the use of it is um, very complementary to the mill. Uh, one of the challenges in the mill is that there's, um, you know, very, there's a lot of competition for the office spaces. And so part of what's going to happen next door here, and given its proximity, is particularly well suited for, is um, some expansion of the companies that are inside offices that, that really should be moving on. And those companies can find a place right next door and take full advantage of the of the programming and vice versa. Uh, obviously, one of the bays that's being uh, proposed is is a coffee shop, so that's great for folks who who work um, in the mill. But you know the the this building, the mill, the administration building. There's the current IU Press building, which we're looking at closely right now. Uh, this particular kiln uh, project, um, you know, the administration's uh, very conscious of how historic preservation should contribute to ongoing vitality um, in a community and economic well-being. We were pleased that the uh, last time we were here, it's, it, it felt like people um, generally positive and that, that the design has been adapted uh, based on the feedback that came in last time. So I think those were really great improvements. Um, and we really appreciate, you know, your, your involvement and understanding in, in uh, tackling this building. As Connor said, it was never intended to have people in it. Uh, so, so for it to have people in it um, in itself is, a, is an achievement. And then hopefully we do it in a way that's very elegant and, and, um, and helps the district overall um, evolve the way we, we hope it will. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Uh, uh, Lucas, do you have any additional? Um, I'd like to just highlight uh, for, I don't think Duncan was here last time, uh, maybe a couple of, uh, just some of the design moves here that uh, we're making to respect the traditional or the historic fabric uh, while also bringing in the, uh, the newer style. So, the openings uh, on the upper two levels are uh, mirrors of the pilasters down below uh, and create voids. So there is a, a repetition of that um, modularity of the first story that's carried through to the upper levels. Um, uh, you know, on the alley side, I think that was one of the largest uh, areas of concern in the courtesy review. Uh, we actually, through a conversation with Connor and, and thinking about what we wanted to do with the masonry, uh, that lower levels we wrapped it around, it made sense to uh, replicate that historic detailing and material, even though uh, there's a suggestion that you should differentiate. I think it's really hard to abide by hard set rules sometimes. You need to be a little bit agile. So 
And in this case, it seemed to make sense to bring in that historic detailing because it's at that lower level. And there was a concern about uh, the connection between the front of the building and the alley side of the building. Uh, so that was, that was our attempt there. Uh, there was this idea of uh, you know, what to do with a stair tower. And um, I mentioned uh, to Connor that, hey, maybe we could uh, uh, really tell that story, as the mayor suggested in the courtesy review, of uh, the showers complex. And so Connor provided the 1927 Sanborn maps, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, have a look if you get a chance uh, in the way that everything was organized. Uh, the, up in the very, very top right corner, you can actually see uh, a little white speck. Uh, that was a sawmill up there and it was all log storage between the sawmill and the kiln. The kiln highlighted in red, and then um, the historic uh, structures that had been demolished and the ones that remain are all represented there from 1927. So, uh, and it's, uh, I don't know, it's, for me it's an attractive piece as well and uh, breaks up that uh, larger stair tower. So, curious to hear the comments and um, or is there any questions? There are no good questions. Okay. Is there any more? Uh, additional comments from uh, Mr. No, Weiler? Or the only thing I would say is I didn't get to come here last time and I just uh, just want to comment that for us it's just really important to preserve that entire story and I think that's why we wanted this building in particular. Um, the story lines up so well with what we're trying to do with startups in the middle. Um, the idea, I tell it all the time, that you know wood was dried here and then it was cut down and then it was taken to that story is, is the driving factor of excitement for us at the Trades District. And so I think this is an opportunity for us to, to maintain that story. All right, thank you. All right, Jeff, questions? I don't have any questions right now. Chris? Yeah, I, I wonder how the longevity of that clear railing will play out, you know, and how it'll actually look day to day when it's got pigeon droppings on it or whatever, you know. <laughs> and I wonder what, what the thinking is of not using a more industrial rail at, on, at that upper level. Uh, well, we wanted something that was somewhat transparent. If you uh, haven't seen the Alexander in Indianapolis, uh, I'd recommend it. Uh, it was actually one of the inspirations, and they have a rooftop deck with a glass rail, and then it actually has sort of wood beyond the deck, and it's just very nice um, and, and really elegant. So um, I trust uh, I trust these guys to keep a clean ship, you know. Uh, so uh, you know the right adjacent to the roof deck area is going to be uh, you know, a conference room, um, and uh, the the roof deck area is going to be an event space uh, that supports both the mill and the kiln. Okay. If, if, uh, yeah, and you know, and maybe it gets a little more panelized. Um, uh, I, I'm sure the Kiln Collective would be happy with the metal rail as well. One way or another, it should be uh, in keeping with the language, I think, of the vertical metal siding. Um, the yeah. clear railing isn't really in any language that is anywhere else on the building in my, in my eye. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, if we broke it up into panels a little bit more and treated it more like a fenestration rather than just solid glass, I think that would help. But we're flexible. Okay, thanks. Jerry? Uh, no questions. Duncan? Hmm. I, I, I totally get how challenging this is. I've been thinking about this for about 30 years. <laughs> I've probably walked 10 different architecture teams through this one time or another. Are you on the, are you raising the floor in the main kiln to get it up to degrade? Yeah, there, the floors are at a variety of different levels. Uh, we need to match the powerhouse in the back to the front. Uh, and the way it works out is the middle two bays uh, have higher floors than the adjacent bays. You're familiar with the building. And yeah. a few of the bays don't have any floors at all, really. Uh, so um, it works out that we're able to level all the floors really close to what the uh, middle two bays are at now. We have to take out the floor in the utility corridor between the powerhouse and the kilns mm -hmm. and lower that in order to make that happen. 
I'm just curious about how these storefronts enter into a subterranean space. Because um, you go down. And no, you don't go down. We're going to go up. We'll, we'll be up about a foot from the existing so turf. So you are filling in that. You're filling it in. Uh, yeah, we're going to fill in the uh, everything. Uh, I mean, in the current building, it's well below. Oh, yeah. Well, some of them are four feet down, you know, yeah. built up on false floors. A few of them, um, you know, are just, uh, you know, you come in and they're ramped down to a concrete right. slab. Right. But we really need to get them all at the same level right. for accessibility. So I think you end up coming up about a foot from the turf. Um, okay. So it's not going to be subterranean. Okay. Uh, it, it, except for the powerhouse is somewhat subterranean, but uh, we're digging that out, putting in stairs and a ramp for accessibility. So normally, I, I, I don't even know where, I, I sort of don't know where to start, and I'm afraid this is going to take so long that <laughs> everybody's going to go to sleep. But, but normally, if you look at a historic building, regardless of your use or your hopes for the use, you, the, the most important thing in the preservation, from the preservation side of it, aside from the economic side of it and the city's well wishes, and we all want this to happen, believe me, um, is you try to read the building's intent that is met through its architecture. And then when you, when you uh, adaptively reuse it or even preserve it or restore it, recognizing the difference between those activities, you look to uh, accomplish a, a result that can be read as close as possible to the original intent of the building. So forget the addition for now. When you look at, at this side of the building, which was closed wing doors that accessed kiln rooms, this looks more like, you know, I'm trying not to be mean-spirited, but it looks more like a mall entrance than it does anything that was industrial. And I wonder if you couldn't do something here. I mean, there are lots of examples of adaptive use of fire stations. Uh, actually, the city garage over here in Bloomington has done a really nice job putting entrances into garage door formations. In other words, they're reading the building that had big gar bus garage doors on it as a bus station, but they're using it mm -hmm. no, as something else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I, would like, I would like it if the part that is the original building were read and adapted so that people could understand its purpose, its original purpose and use, and still accommodate the kinds of things you need. So as opposed to sort of storefront configurations. I, now on the north end, you actually have, where there wasn't any penetration, interestingly, you've created a, a much more garage door-like penetration one of them, I don't know if that actually goes up and down or not, or whether that's just. <clears throat> the right is an overhead door. And, so it does, and, it does go up and down? It does. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. It's so open to a, um, a garden cafe area. Right, right. OK. So I mean, that's a, that's a better presentation, I think, that could be read the way that, that the west elevation was originally intended to be read, which was that these were places where you could back up a truck and offload or inload <coughs> lumber. So I'm not saying they can't have doors and they shouldn't and they shouldn't have glass. Just don't think that the fen the way it's fenestrated reads as as doors. Did you know if we have any documentation of what that facade looked like? I, I, you know, I, 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 I don't think I've ever seen anything other than what's there now, that that, that those sort of metal, wood, some of them are wood doors clad in metal, and yeah. some of them are just metal doors. But we know, we know that they were full openings for for loading yeah. off and in and out. So, so, and I don't know exactly what it means as you go around the building. I mean, I, I but. I think it's possible to read and, and interpret the, the original kiln building more as an industrial building than, it, than you are doing. Let, let's, make it, let's just say it that, that way. And that, and that the fenestration is, is the main element that you have to deal with in order to, 
to give us some idea that this was basically a bunch of garage bays. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that feels good to you for commercial intent or anything like that, I, I don't know, but I think it would still work for the intention of the building. And it just hasn't, it just hasn't been tried here yet. So that, that's something that, <coughs> that I would suggest. And, and, and the second thing is that when you normally, the normal sort of protocol when you do an adaption of, a, of an industrial building is that you try to stay in some form in industrial motif and and take for instance the entrance to this building uh, on both sides the one on the cook side and the one on this side they're very modern interpretations um, but they they treat the building with the kinds of materials that are of an industrial origin and so even though they are totally different and, and create entrances where there never were any, they, they read as industrial. And, and, and so, and that's a commitment that those architects made to, to this building that I think works pretty well. And, and, and I'm not seeing that here. Like, I think this is more of an attempt to completely make it over. And what preservationists like to see is some aspect of the original intent of the building incorporated into the makeover. And, and I'm not saying that's a simple thing to do, but I think if it's if that's that's the kind of guidance I would is if I were consulting on this, that's the kind of guidance I would provide. And and the second story from this side could be interpreted as a as a kind of industrial appearance, but from the from the east side it looks more like a mid century modern house. And that that doesn't it doesn't read to me it reads to me that it's it's accomplishing what it wants to on the inside, but it's kind of ignoring uh, the original building on the outside. I don't mind the material, but I just I find it a little bit too, too I'm like over articulated if there if there's such a word. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's for me it's much more about respecting the original building. Like you're down on the left side, I think it does that pretty well. And I, and I don't even mind the penetrations on the north end. I think those are, you know, so, I'd almost rather not see them, but I, I understand their, their, the need for them. And, and I think they're done better than the, than the sort of, uh, than the west side. I think the west side's the one that needs the most work. So is that in the form of a question, Dr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't you? I want to. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, uh, I appreciate what you're saying about the storefront on the west side. I think there are opportunities to. Uh, in fact, uh, you mentioned industrial motif. I get. I get a little bit excited about that. That's 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 pretty fun, and I can see how this is coming off as a little bit of a you know um, a little bit of a mall. Uh, right now, I think it reads a little bit better from a perspective. Can you go to the perspective um, where we're uh, that, that's fine. Um, where we're introducing some awnings again, we're bringing in wood on the underside, a native hardwood. Mm -hmm. um, so we're again respecting the story of the kiln uh, using uh, native uh, materials and giving it that warmth. Um, you know, um, so I think, yeah be willing to look at the storefront on, on, on the first level. Now, as for the west side versus the alley side, um, I think it's a little bit of a trick. Um, are, are, are any of you familiar with the Hearst building in New York City? The Hearst Towers, yeah. one of the circle, circle yeah. done by uh, Foster. Yeah. Um, could you pull it up real fast? Just Google it, Hearst building. Um, it's, and I think it's, um, H-E-A-R-A. Yeah, it. Um, it sits on top of a historic structure right there, the top right uh, image. It sits on top of the historic structure, and um, the power of that upper level really kind of feeds off of that lower level, um, you know, and two completely different buildings. So, uh, and the top very much calls attention to itself as a piece of architecture, but it's still in harmony with and responds to the historic fabric of the street below. You know, in this district, we have um, these competing forces of 
a very low-lying historic structure um, that uh, we're completely changing the use and we're responding to um, you know the height of the surrounding buildings if you want to go to the uh, elevation from the west side from afar uh, Connor that's it but not it the yes, when I took I don't know if I included your one with the outline okay well it shows the height of the three stories which is significantly lower than the buildings adjacent and the grass that we're looking at in front is going to be developed with contemporary um, buildings most likely um, since it, it's it's you know a tech center um, so the east side of the building is a different building than the west side of the building the west side of the building and the north side of the building are responding to the building below we're repeating those patterns we're stepping the building back and allowing those historic facades to take precedence we have to add a stair tower on the east side, which is the alley side, and uh, but we don't want to be apologetic about it, right? right. Uh, we want to uh, introduce some design. Um, uh, I like modern architecture. I think this perspective here is particularly attractive with the overhangs. They're clean, simple lines that connect the front of the building all the way around to the back of the building. Um, it's a little less um, um, disorganized, I think, than it was when it came last time. And, uh, and then we have this opportunity to bring in a piece of art that tells the story of the building. So I understand what you're saying, Duncan, and I, I think we've all been thinking about the difference between the east side and the west side, but uh, personally I like that it's a different building on, on, the, on the alley side than it is on the, on the west side. So. Yeah, it is in reality a different building. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, if you just walk over there and look at it, mm -hmm. they're, they're not the same building from, it, it, from each side. Yeah. And I don't have any objection to, to taking each side sort of independently. I was actually trying to suggest that, that the, the usual motive is to, is to take the original and do the best you can with, with, in, with continuing to show the architectural intent of the building, even as you adapt it. And I, I get how tricky it is. So you can let the building tell you or you can add things to it that you interpret as telling the story and and I, I think the general rule is let the building tell you so when you say you have awnings on them that have wood in them and that tells that somehow relates the fact that it was a kiln building no not really it's, it's just it's just an idea about it but if you let the building tell you what it is you can still be successful and I think that's the real trick and I'm not it's not you know I'm just sitting here as an advisor to this to this group because I've done a lot of buildings like this and I I know how what the requirements of preservation are so so that's I think this side is the one that can really be fixed I think the other one is better I don't really like what's on top very much because it doesn't speak to industrial motif to me, and I think it could do that better. Um, and I, and a row of storefronts that just looks like something you drive up to doesn't doesn't adequately treat this building. So, but I think it could be done there, very similarly to the way you did it on the north end. And I'd lose the awnings. It, it is the west side <laughs> of the building. I, mean, I know, I get know, it. Pres preservation standards also suggested. You know, new architectural elements that contribute to the sustainability of the building um, are looked upon favorably. Um, yeah, so it's a it's, it's a, a very very exposed space. I'm already nervous about um, the western sun hitting that building. Yeah. And um, uh, and the and, you know the inhabitants of the building um, and uh, what they're going to be contending with on those hot summer days. So. Yeah, I mean, really there, I, I think that's we a do, goal. We do have the trees out there. They're not in the renderings. We wanted to show the building, but we no, do that's, have uh, overstory native deciduous trees planted in front of the building. Yeah, I mean, that's a goal that needs to be met. I'm just not sure that this meets it. I mean, I, I see something more like a clear story over, over, the, over the actual openings or something that would, maybe, it's, maybe they're louvered, maybe they're a sun deflecting or absorbing glass, maybe it's something else that gets you the shade you need. But um, I, don't, I don't know, that's, that's not what I'm here to decide really, but that's, those are my comments. Great, thank you, Duncan. Doug, questions? No questions. Sam, questions? A couple of quick ones. Um, if you would go to the uh, east perspective elevation thing, uh, in the plan, there's this angled wall 
that happens. I, uh, I want to say that this is so much cleaner than the last time we saw it, and I'm much happier with this, but uh, what I'm wanting to figure out is like you look on the plan, if you show me a plan of the ground floor, if you look above, you know, sort of halfway down the that thing right there, where's that? Yeah. on the elevation the, that's that's a that's an older site plan um the newer site plan didn't get included um uh -huh. showing the vegetation and everything like that the if you come over to the one from the north that one stop yep. um so uh, there was a question about trying to highlight the entrance on the east side mm -hmm. and so part of highlighting the entrance is continuing that roof line around pulling it down pulling a little bit of a visual connection over to the entrance which um, Duncan, because we had to lower everything on that first level, we have to bring the entrance down um, right. in, in, into that area. Uh, so the roof comes out, provides a bit of a cover over the entrance, uh, the kiln um, placed right above the entrance. So the glass uh, storefront on that side, that is uh, perpendicular, um, parallel, square with the building. But there is the angled wall that uh, connects between the stair tower and the storefront. So under where it says the kiln, that, That's is, that is the angled bit. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and that allows for just a little bit more room in the lobby space. It's very tight between the building and the parking and the alley. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a lot of room to work with. So mm -hmm. uh, kicking that out of it just gives us a bit more room. And also, if you'll notice, there's a pilaster uh, to the right of the window in the powerhouse. Um, we're, we're um, according to the guidelines, we want to be able to take the entire addition off and have the original building uh, still intact, and uh, this accomplishes that to a large degree. We're bringing the walls, uh, the new walls, into the pilasters. We're not coming into the uh, recessed areas, um, so that's, that's another reason why we want to kick that out. But of course, we don't want to kick the entire stair tower out, so it seemed like a bit more of an elegant way to do it is to create a bit of a wall. <coughs> That accomplishes that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, can you show me the north elevation, Connor? Okay, so that's okay. So it looks like you've got a fairly, uh, relative to the original building, you've got about an 18 inch setback all the way around the, from the top of the original building to the front face of the second floor. Is that fair? Yeah, 18, 26. So the pilasters are actually 26 inches um, um, thick. So it's like 28 What's that? ish. So it's a little over two foot then. Yeah. OK. Uh, we will, yeah, we'll leave that back a little bit. And, um, we don't want to build right on top of the brick. Gotcha. And then would you show me the um, west elevation? There you go. And so, so you've got from the ground to the second, it's like the 28, and then it looks like if that's 28, then it's about four feet from two to three. And some more. Okay. Those are 16 inch grid lines. Okay, thank you. 12 inch oh. on the stair towers. And then one other question, would you describe the composition of those awnings that come out of the top of the storefront? You've got hardwood on the bottom? Yeah, hardwood on the bottom. Uh, there would be steel awnings. Uh, internally supported so we would not be making any connection to the historic brick um, which is also one of the guidelines uh, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so it'd be a black steel structure with wood on the bottom side and then um, that would be water resistant of course and they're slipping back toward the building back toward the building with a scupper that would then uh, go off to either side and then yeah. you have downspouts or yeah, we'll, have, we'll, we'll, we'll have downspouts that come down and uh, picked up and they're picked up sort of in, in line with the storefront kind of thing, or? That's an element that's not shown, yes. Okay, thanks, that's all I got. But it will be, obviously, a subterranean. Uh, Subsurface uh, drainage? Water, yeah, yeah. I mean, it will be less water coming off of the, um, uh, the top of the first level, but we will have a lot of water coming off of the roof deck area, mm -hmm. the third floor, and mm -hmm. we're gonna have to bring that down somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't see downspouts at every awning, um, but we are going to have to have downspouts on the building, so we might have um, the equivalent of a gutter that runs between the awnings and the building, and then we pick up a downspout from the upper levels. Everything's drained to the northwest corner. Right. 
and then it's uh, where the glass railing ends is that's where the occupiable portion of the, the third floor ends. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Sam. I don't have any questions. Let's move to comments. Jeff. Um, Duncan articulated something that I couldn't come up with um, when I first looked at this plan. Um, and uh, it's my reaction to the loss of the building and what he was saying about how the storefront, I think maybe that's what I'm reacting to. Um, I'm okay with the addition and I'm okay with most of it. I'm quite okay with the east side, but the vernacular, the, the feeling of that industrial part of this side of the building is completely lost with that storefront. So um, that's, you know, that's how I feel about it. And, and it, you know, it's informed by what Duncan said about that stuff. And I, I think that there is a, a better way to um, make this feel like it was the kiln and not lose that, you know, that feeling of that first floor, especially on this very important uh, facade. That's it. Yeah. I I see the five bays. Maybe there's something that can be done that would uh, both deal with the light and give a historical reference. You know, I, I, I really think the glass rail calls too much attention to itself and that there's industrial rail all over. And if it just humbly had an industrial rail up there, it would still function beautifully. And it would just integrate a little better with not only the building, but the site. I think it wants to show off a little bit, and I, I think it detracts by its attraction. So that, that's what catches my eye. Chris, I think that's a good comment. I mean, I think that, that's very minimal of that. Um, so I'm kind of looking over Duncan's shoulder here. It's funny, if you look at the, uh, and the, these aren't up there, but if you look at the uh, saw tooth of the, the mill, those are glass panels. Um, and, you know, and that's right adjacent to where those, uh, that glass railing would be. So maybe if we could start to pick up some of that um, similar proportioning and repetition of elements up there, it would be good. I, don't, I certainly don't want to get into anything too ornate. I think industrials, industrial would be good, but I, you know, also don't want it to be too heavy. So. Jenny? Um, yeah. <laughs> I want to say how much more I like the other side of the building than the way it was before. I think that's a really nice, a much better treatment. I, um, I love the, the brick part in the bottom. Uh, very well on the other side um, and even the north side I really I think that's nice um, those almost look like filled in bays so you've got the brick kind of inset and then coming down and I'm wondering if you could you know maybe pick something up like that and it also would help you with that west side exposure thing with all the glass inset. well see how that's See, it looks like, basically, that looks like it used to be bigger, and you've made it smaller. And that's pretty common on old industrial buildings. You know, you kind of fill it in with other brick. Or you fill it in with this, or you fill it in with that. And it doesn't have to look original, because it shouldn't. Um, but uh, I'm not expressing myself very well. Um, but you, ha you can play with it over there, and it will look less like a, a mallish or um, storefrontish because they're not really storefront. They're, they're people's offices, right? Little it businesses? Business. Yeah. Little businesses. businesses. Yeah, I mean, Soma mm -hmm. on the far end will be yeah. storefront-ish, but yeah. the rest of those will definitely be, that's the intended use is for, yeah. you know, my, my office is right there. Yeah, that's nice, that's <laughs> very nice. Yeah. And, uh, and also, if I, I, the, the tilt up, the awning is cool, but you know, if the purpose is for shade, um, tilting it up, you're gonna get less. So I understand you want to see see the I building more. Big, and, and I haven't talked about this, I haven't about this, but one of the big challenges is mm -hmm. preserving as much of the brick as possible, but also the fact that there are no other windows inside of those. Uh, yeah, keeping it bright. 
Mm -hmm. So the idea of working out of there, I mean, that's that was the first thing that mm -hmm. our employees said. They were like, oh, there's no windows, you know, and so trying to get as much glass in the front and balance Well, with it all boarded up right now, yes. it would be well, like a tomb in it's there. It's absolutely terrifying yeah. to everyone. Yeah, uh, I think... I think that had all been open, they'd all been going, oh my gosh, this is so exposed, if all those doors hadn't been on there. Um, so, you know, I think basically you have glass wall right now. Uh, but, okay, well, that was my only comment. I want to kind of jump in on this because mm -hmm. I, I think I might be reading Duncan's uh, comments maybe a little bit differently. I think what Duncan's suggesting is that instead of having the traditional storefront, we just uh, maybe rethink the proportions of the um, elements in a way. I mean, it, it could be that maybe we're just dealing with uh, just straight vertical elements. We don't have the horizontal lines in there with the panels below and the you know windows up top and maybe the doors are a little bit taller. Reworking the proportions to give it a little bit more of an industrial motif uh, rather than it uh, looking like more of a traditional storefront. Am I, am, I, am I getting you right, Duncan? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's part of it. I, I'm, I don't think we're talking, what I'm saying is I don't think we're talking about filling in with brick and making it no. more opaque. I think it's just a matter of reworking that module. Um, I don't know, uh, I don't think we're differentiating between each module because traditionally those mod those modules were not differentiated, right? They were, the, they were <coughs> pretty much doing the same thing. As, as so far as we know, So yeah. coming up with a treatment that uh, is the <coughs> storefront and has a bit more of an industrial motif, but not putting in brick, not reducing the amount of glass. Um, I would argue that we still need to provide shade. I, I, you know, I think that's an element that um, I'd really prefer not to take out. And one of the reasons why we had the larger overhangs up high was to provide that shade to the west side as well. So. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm looking at this particular picture here of the, you can see of the west side, mm -hmm. and 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 it, and and we don't probably know, at least in the original configuration, how these openings were treated. We, we just know that they were openings. And, and the indication for that is that is that 10 or 12 inch steel riveted header. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a real industrial detail that I'm not catching at all in your plan. And I don't know why that has to disappear. Are you talking about that header? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm not seeing that at all. You've either taken it out or covered it up or and that's a really critical architectural aspect of this industrial building, and it's defining those openings. Mm -hmm. And why that's gone, I, that's, I don't think you can justify that. Now, maybe it's, you don't care because you put that awning there, <laughs> but I, I think that's a really critical piece of architecture that has to stay. And, and, the, and the openings are constructed under that original header. And by the way, that, by the way, the Hearst building was never completed on top, which is the rationale for Foster's design. You know, one of the things that you know, as you're talking about this, time, what I'm what I'm thinking is those openings. Uh, well, they were they were open. You know, there there wasn't really any horizontal. It wasn't broken up horizontally. You know, I, I think maybe more of a vertical treatment would be more appropriate. No, I agree with that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that's one piece of historic fabric you have there that that steel header that defines that that defines that space and that's that's historic fabric mm -hmm. there it is mm -hmm. and you're not exploiting it I mean you think of all the storefronts restored storefronts that exploit that yeah. and paint the rivets different colors and blah 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 and you're, right. you're, you've you basically it. gotten rid of it no I love it I, lo I like what you're saying and that if you just took out all that sheet metal and looked at the bare bones structure there, I don't think it would be that hard to design an opening that told us all that those were doors. Yeah, no, right? I, I like it, I like, I like what you're picking up on there. And, the, and that's what I meant when I first started, it was like you have to look at the building and look at it and look at it and look at it and look at what's left, not, you know, not how can I make this look like I want it to look, but look at, look at how it wants to look and then go. And, and I think I don't think that's that complicated a design problem on that side of the building. Jenny said some good things about it too. And they're not entrances per se, for your purposes. So how they're how they're fenestrated isn't isn't as critical, you know, like it would be in a mall where they are entrances. Well, I mean, they are entrances. I mean, those are entrances to each one of the businesses. 
Okay. okay. But, but, you, I like, I, I but like you want to the, treat them all the same. And right? I like the header. Yeah. I think we can still do an awning and respect the header. You know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, we'll, all right, we'll get there. <laughs> I know how it is when you get onto something that you really like. It's really hard to let go of it, but no, I, I don't no, think it works. No, not necessarily. So yeah, I mean, I think there is evidence there that will help take it to take that that facade differently. And I, I haven't figured out what I think about the ups. I, I just think the upstairs looks too much like an apartment building. Thank you, Duncan. Doug. Yeah. Uh, first, I'd say you did a great job responding to our uh, comments from the meeting a couple of weeks ago. Um, I mean, I see a lot of changes. Uh, I think I can agree with a lot of the comments that have been made about the east side of the building. Um, that's a pretty dramatic change. Um, I'm still not a fan of the, the glass on the stair tower, the, the, the vertical. And I know it's vertical circulation. Uh, and I know some people liked it last time. I'm, you know, it still seems like to me, it just seems the one thing out of place. It almost, in a way, it almost draws my eye to that. And I, and I, but I like what you've done with the entry, with the kiln and the, the roof there and the glass separation. Um, so I don't know if that detail on the stair has completely been worked out. I like the bays. I like the brick. Um, I think Duncan hit it on the head. And go back to the west side, which seems to be the uh, slice of pie of the day here. We keep talking about and coming back to, so to speak. Um, you know, I thought thought about a couple of things. I didn't I didn't really like the glass railing early on, and I can see what everybody's kind of fighting with. And of course, in these renderings, it always makes it stand out way more than yeah. because it's got a sheen to it. Part of what I wondered is is it could you do a more verticals there that almost either line up with the pilasters. Uh, you know, I know you've got the black railing around, and I, I've gone back and forth. Boy, would that be too heavy up there? And uh, you know, cable. I like what's that? Or cable? Yeah, or yeah, you know, I love the cable rail idea. I like what, what Duncan hit on the head to me was be more industrial, and I think you picked up on that. Mm -hmm. So part of me is looking at this, going, do you can you do something there that, that the joints in the glass? And I think started to talk about how the glass of the uh, clear stories like on the mill and this building are and they're segmented so I think there's nothing wrong with that um, I, I I think that the, the main thing for me is yes these bays when once Duncan said it I have not left that thought and that is it just looks like a commercial strip mall a retail center with the with the infill glass you know can you You've got to keep the opening. I, I love the, the Duncan caught the steel uh, headers over these, and I think you've got room to, I still think you've got room to work your your uh, canopy in. I think, Duncan, the canopy, the, you did the building the, uh, the, that my office used to be in at, at uh, uh, the Frosted Foods building. Mm -hmm. And there was kind of an open canopy, but there was something, some, some kind of, something that was done to kind of frame that west side. And it just was like a C channel and it was really kind of neat. Yeah, it's you just would, a ghost. There's yeah. No, there's no roof on it. Yeah, exactly. And I know you, I know why you need something here, but I think there's something you could do that's more industrial than what you've got. Mm -hmm. I don't need to see the bottom of these harkening back to wood and kiln was here. I, I think that's, I think Duncan's right. I think that's too much of a stretch, but I would like to see something more industrial. And it could be a canopy, either it's sea channels or something. Um, this picture, sh this rendering shows, so it looks like you've got, what is that, a metal panel then in the bottom of the storefronts I'm looking at? One of the views makes it look like all glass, and then this one makes it look like, yeah, that almost made me think you had all glass in the opening. Uh -huh. And I had made the note that maybe something industrial along that base, and, you know, so you, you bring the size of that glass in a little bit. Now, not a lot, because I know, as you said, it's the only windows to these spaces and we need to take advantage of it um, but I think there's something here you could do and you you know whether the the grid changes to more an industrial type of storefront grid itself I like the overhead door on the north side 
I like I, I think that to me that that reads as industrial that reminds me of the doors they've used on the fire stations where they've rehabbed something that was historical and how do you carry that over and still get a door opening and maybe for me is the maybe the doors don't have you know I, I can't tell if I'm bothered because the doors are symmetrical or, or I know the bays need to be but do the doors need to stay off to one side in each opening and let the grid of the opening be more dramatic than the, the double door opening that you have. I, I don't know. Um, more dominant. Yeah, 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 the grid being more dominant than the, because right now the, that door is very open. Now I know, and you talked about Duncan, and Duncan's our advisor, and so, you know, while he's a non-voting member, he wasn't at the last meeting, and he always brings up things that, those aha things are like, oh yeah, okay. Um, you know, I, 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 think, I think you're really close with some things. I think this is the facade now that, that could use the work. I'm not bothered by the up, I mean, you, to make this work, I know we've got to do the additions and I like the different material. I like what you did with, to minimize the roof. I think between the railing and between the, the openings and the industrial nature, I think you're, you're pretty darn close. Yeah, that's all I've got. Sam. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate what a lot of my fellow commissioners have said. This has come a long way since the last time. I really appreciate you modifying the east elevation so much. It was kind of a hot mess last time around, and it's super clean now comparatively. Um, I like that you've sort of cleaned up the roof. You've gotten rid of the, you know, uh, I don't like that you've gotten rid of the solar panels, but at least it's not. You know, well, we can still do solar on the building. It's just flat. Yeah. So, so it's not. You know, it's oh, not. It's not it. the caricature it was. Um, but I think I, I will again reiterate what Duncan said, and that this is an industrial building, and the the what I said the last time around is like the the fenestration on the second and third floors feels a lot like uh, it's a sort of 1970s residential scale uh, windows, you know, like yeah. trailer windows kind of thing. Um, but you look at factory buildings of this era and, you know, for the next hundred years, you have these big punched openings. Yeah, and daylight these, factory yeah, windows. Yeah, these, these windows are human scaled openings. And I think that holds for both the doors on the lower end and all the fenestration on the upper end. I appreciate that you're sort of reversing this. Uh, you know, you have where the, the pilasters are, you have this void, and that's fun. However, the every other window up there, that's a residential scaled window. Um, and the doors on the ground floor are residential scaled doors. You know, when you go into a, a, a factory, everything, they don't care how big people are because they want to get trucks through, they want to get equipment through. This was, this was a piece of architecture that was built to bring in huge logs and that sort of thing. And if you can recollect that and sort of ignore the human scale for a little bit, you know, beef it up, make it vertical, make it wider, um, and punch it punch up the scale of, of both your entries and your fenestration all the way up, I think it would help you a lot. Because, um, you know, I, I'm, it, the, 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 the articulation on the, on the up, it, it, it's too fine. And I think what I liked about what happened between this version and the last version, especially on the east elevation, is that there's a clarity to that. It's cleaned up a whole lot. And if you can do that with the fenestration, that I think would improve this project enormously. Um, you know, and it, you know, I, the glass, it, it reads strongly, but if you pull everything out and industrialize everything, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, you know, I like to fool around in hardware stores and you know, my, my, my brother runs a box company, and my dad did when I was little, and we would ride on the conveyor belts when, on the off shifts, you know, get bo it was a box company, so we'd ride boxes on the conveyor belts. And it's fantastic. I mean, it's like such a different, it, it's a foreign territory. Um, but if you can get yourself in that space, 
and get your articulations not so fine grain. I think it would help a lot. Um, I'm going to harp again on the thing that I harped again on, on last time around, which is the setbacks on the north elevation. You've got the, the 24 inch and then you've got the 48 inch. And I either want to see big or nothing because it feels, again, it's another fine grain thing. And it, when you're making an industrial building, you know, they, they put like a 50,000 square foot building and they make a box. And this is so articulated. Um, I would like it to be a little more brutal. Uh, I mean, I'm not opposed to doing away with the third floor setback on the north side. But I, I'm not either. <laughs> but I don't like, uh, I, I think there needs to be a setback between the brick and the second floor. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not arguing that. I'm yeah. saying between the second and the third floor, either make it big or don't make it at all. And we, need, and we don't have a setback. We, there is no setback on the alley side, mm -hmm. but we obviously need one on the west side. So um, I'm not, I have no that, problem with taking, adding some square footage up there. No, if you want to move that north side out, and that's fine. Uh, the planning commission, you know, they have the setback requirement, but the setback requirement really is about buildings being up against the sidewalk and allowing some space to the street. Mm -hmm. Here we're far enough off the street that I, I don't think we're going to have an issue. Yeah, I, I think you've done a nice job, but I mean, it's a big building compared to the mill building and compared to what's there already. Uh, you're trying to mitigate that. It's still big, but you know, you've, you've got some constraints that you're working with in terms of economic feasibility and that sort of thing, but um, I, I appreciate... The, the, the plate heights are relatively low. Yeah, it's tight. It's a yeah. tight building. Yeah, we're trying not to push it up too high. No, I think you know? that's great. Yeah. And you've moved everything to the north to keep it away from the some mill building, steps. which is yeah. great. Yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of in a way like move it over a little bit more, but you don't have to like, it, but it's far enough away that you don't have to. So if you want a little yeah. extra square footage there, I wouldn't complain. Um, would you go to the, oh God, the sort of, e, that, that one, yes, that one. Um, and then the only other thing is I'm still a little like, the, the, where the new stuff meets the old stuff. And uh, it's tricky, the compatible but differentiated. Um, like you've got, the existing building, and boom, you have this, uh, the, the board and batten metal stuff just runs all the way down the side. Um, I don't know, how, how do you recognize that? You've got this little espace between the old stuff and the new stuff, which I think is... I, I was thinking about your yeah. comment when we did, when, 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 when you know I turned that corner and you know it's lined up on the pilaster you know so, yeah um, so we're respecting the back side of the building um, I didn't run the brick into no. the existing brick the new brick is pulled away from the existing brick right yeah and I also appreciate that you've reduced the pallet of materials and I think that's much cleaner I think that's much better and I like the graphic too um, love to put a window in there but it's under a stair link it's under a stairway. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be a sweet spot for a window. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, well. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe. All right. But that's, looks, yeah. looks Looks out onto the, um, you know, the walk-in fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a lot better hidden this time around. Yeah. I mean, for something that's supposed to be, like, at the entry where you're coming back into the power building, it's it's a lot cleaner and it's a lot more like okay this is where you go so i i really appreciate that i did i forgot one question is there going to be the kiln on the other side sorry what's the is there going to be a sign on the other side that says the kiln or um, where, what are the what yeah, signs do you we have we had talking can you go around to the front side uh, uh, uh perspective perspective view uh, my my preference would be a uh, pedestrian scale sign um, that uh, is uh, associated with either the awning or the pilaster that um, um, is uh, kind of like a flag sign, a smaller flag sign that identifies the space uh, that would be interchangeable if the business is changed. Um, I don't know that there's a good spot here for you know a larger. Kiln sign. You can do a steel sculpture too. Like cut out. 
Uh -huh. I think the corner is going to be a nice place to identify the building, both corners, the corner of Madison 11 and the corner of the alley. And, uh, well, when you 11. back out, you know, you've got the other building and it says you know, right on the side there. Uh, if you back out, Connor, on a real picture. Yeah, because so the, the mill is identified. Yeah, the mill is like, there it is, right on the, the mill. And, you know, if, if you wanted to make it identify more with it. That's a way to do well, if we if we if we if we change the way we're treating the awning and we do go with more of a C channel awning around front, we would have I think the ability to do signage on that C channel um, that would be sort of in keeping with the language of the campus. Uh, and I think people approaching from this side, you know, and you go, oh, you know, we're in the mill. Okay, <laughs> they won't be approaching from some of them will be from the alley side. Uh, but, like I said, it could be industrial steel art, or it could be almost anything. Right. I like that industrial steel art idea. All right, I don't have any uh, uh, comments. Uh, I think that we have to, I think what we should consider is uh, letting uh, Lucas go back with our suggestions and maybe coming back to our next meeting with revisions. Is there around on that, Connor? Um, so the HPC essentially has until March 20th uh, to deny or approve this. Um, so the turnaround for you would be um, instead of giving it to me tomorrow to be on the next meeting, we can work out a similar arrangement like last time, uh, maybe uh, late next week or something. Thank you. Better than tomorrow. We're <laughs> 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 like really sleeping. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to make a do we need we to make a make motion, motion to to, to, to deny? To continue. continue. To continue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, don't like yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make yeah, sure. I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> uh, make a motion. Uh, do we have a? I don't have a number on this thing in front of me. Yes. Me. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to continue COA 20-13 to, what will be our next? Uh, March 12th. To our March 12th meeting. Second. Doug Bruce. Yes. Sam Sauter. Yep. Jeff Wolden. Yes. John Saunders. Yes. Chris Durbon. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Thank really you. appreciate your uh, service and your input. Thank you. Yeah. You're making it a better building. Yeah. This Thank is you. Yeah. 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 I think it's going to be a great start. Yeah. All right. I'm so happy somebody's taking it on. It's a long meeting day. Let's um, let's move on to demolition delay. Yeah. That's actually what we're doing around the, uh, the perimeter. Yeah. You know, more of a kind of okay. Like All right. Uh, we had. Uh, Demolition delay 19-25, 414 East 9th Street. Is there a petitioner here this evening? Okay. Full demolition. Need I say more? <laughs> so we've, we've seen this three or four times already. Did we ask for some more information or do we just, I don't remember what we... We did, there wasn't any more. Yeah. We, I think we well, continued it to this meeting as a statement. I thought we asked that right. you pre or write a statement or send a statement to the, the guy that no. says, couldn't, we, couldn't you put an addition on it, I think was the idea. Doug? Yeah. Uh, so um, I discovered uh, the Tuesday of this week that uh, a, a client that I have, uh, that this is uh, his building. And so I was like, oh, wait, let's talk, you know. And so I got a hold of Connor. Connor and I talked the other day and emailed back and forth. And then I called and, and spoke to my client. Um, I think he has a representative here. And, uh, you know, basically, and, and some of the discussion was that, that, that this is, uh, he, he looked at the idea of an addition, but because this is so small mm -hmm. and the addition needs to be, and again, this is not something I'm, I'm drawing or working on. This was a complete accident to come across it. But that the, the addition and this building would need to bring somewhere between eight and 10 bedrooms and you're, you're not gonna get that. Mm -mm. And, and Chris had brought this up last year in the discussions of the new UDO 
this is one of those buildings that you know the UDO the 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 new one that'll come out will allow a multi you know higher density type of structure and really that's kind of the plan for this site um, and we're kind of kind of caught in a, a rock in a hard place uh, he looked at the idea that yeah that, that you know could we do something you know what could we do to save this this building and what kind of addition would it take and um, this is kind of what came up and this is really kind of where it's heading I believe residential multifamily and so this is kind of the new new EDO as far as um, you know that makes that land really valuable yeah, yeah. there's about a third or fourth of Elm Heights also that's the same zoning so they can go to you know three stories not to exceed 40 feet so it went from five unrelated to this right mm -hmm. yeah no, I, I said it was going to blow up areas but mm -hmm. so everything so I think basically he's not interested in addition. Is that correct, Doug? He he was interested in addition, but we, but didn't feel you were going to get the, the, number of bedrooms. That you yeah. you're not going to get the three story mass out of this. I mean, you know, this thing has what, th three Basically. bedrooms in it, maybe, 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 and you're certainly not going to do an addition that has five. Right. You could do one that has four. And I you, think. And you, yeah, and you might get that. And so, so I guess what I would like to add to this is, is that, I, you know, it's, I don't think it, I, you know, I've kind of got my hands involved in it as far as at least saying, hey, look, can we look at, at some stuff here? And I think, I mean, Peter, you're, are you here yeah. for, for them? So I don't think it's completely out of the realm that we have quit looking for a, a solution here. We just, at this point, I mean, we're kind of up like, like us as a, you know, we've either got a designate or it gets, right. it gets. Totaled. But I would just say I think there's an earnest. The discussion came out that, well, how do we do that? What do we look at? And so, we didn't get any. You know, this just happened Tuesday. You know, my suggestion, my thought is, well, you know, maybe I pull up a GIS site plan and look and say, boy, what can we, what can we get on here? And if we can get something on here, let's go. We'll, we'll go back and say, hey, we're because it was brought up by by uh, my client is you know we if we got the blessing of this board to do something because we're going to save what we can here we still have to go before you know we still have to get approval from the planning department and you know would this would this board go to bat with us to help us come up with something i i don't know that the new udo has a way for a waiver or a variance on something so so I don't know you know at this point if we do nothing today we either have to designate or or we have to or this gets released but I guess my thought is in talking to him if it gets released I don't think he's just going to go out tomorrow and there's going to be equipment on site tearing it down exactly he's yeah. he's willing to explore the options uh, and he's not gonna make a hasty decision to tear it down quick and then figure it out so um, and Doug did a good job of of uh, kind of bringing him around to, to looking at potential options. So what kind of zoning do you run into when you're trying to make something smaller than they want? What kind of zoning? Problems. You just said there, there, there are some zoning issues. What's the maximum? I mean, maximum to lot, maximize I mean, the property. Yeah. Well, that, that's a developer point of view. That's not right. necessarily a planning but, point of view. But Doug yeah. said it would have to go through planning if we'd so that there's there's nothing that would restrict him from building smaller no no but yeah. but i haven't had a client that comes to me Finances. either on any project that ever says spend all my money and take all the time you want to take either i mean none of them would come and say let's do something smaller for the most part i was referring to something you said i was getting clarification yeah yeah i guess i don't know enough of the complete goals on this other than when it came up with with the discussion with Connor and I and the new UDO and what that's allowed to be here now is that yeah how do you how do you and that would be what I would try to look at is and and even with this what I'm saying is I would look at, to this group even and say hey how do we come up with something that gets pretty darn close to what he expects out of here and maybe is a savings of money of t instead of tearing this down and 
building setback to setback because I'm not e I haven't even looked at the site yet have had the time right. to even say here's what the setbacks are. So it might need BZA he might setback requirements. That it, and if eased. we could, yeah, that's right. So if if there's a BZA that's a, 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 a appeal on maybe enlarging the setback to allow us to keep this building and do right. an addition, mm -hmm. that damage. might be the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I guess so that so part of me is saying, look, you, we're, we don't get much say today. I mean, that's what we, we, we didn't have much say two weeks ago. But there's some new information to light when I found out that it was my, my client on another project to say, hey, can we, can I think the commission would work with you on this on an addition. Because that's the feeling that I think I, we got when we discussed this two weeks mm -hmm. ago. And so I think there's enough there to be able to say, would we would we work with him? I, I think if he walks out of here with the demo permit, it, like I said, it's not getting torn down. I want to. Uh, it, it 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 could. Could. But there's sure. yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying yeah. It's it's 99% it won't. I'm saying it, there's there's probably still 90% it will. But there's a there's some discussion and chance that something could happen, and part of that might involve this group even going to the BZA to say. We like this idea that he's brought back to us now, but it's going to require this. You, you have our support, and nice. I think that's what I would like to be able to take to him and say, we do "We'll work with you." We, we do, do that all the time. I, yeah, I understand that, but I, I'm not going to be presumptuous enough to say, "Sure, they will." You know, yeah, I just know how. The last meeting, I think, when the meeting ended, even or at the end of the meeting under d discussion, we were just talking about, "Wow, boy, we." Can we? What can we do? You know, mm -hmm. what can we do to save this? What kind of addition? What would this board do? And that's when I found out. Oh my gosh! Wait a minute. You're, you have this building. Let me tell you what the commission said, and let's see what we can do. Right. Well, it's a precedent-setting building in this new UDO. So, it might be interesting. The math is a little different. If you're not going to go for ten bedrooms, but you're spending X, it still could. The math can still work. That's right. I just don't know the math. I don't it know the site, and I haven't applied the new UDO to it yet. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can spend less. And get and less, and spend it, less. That's and right. And have the percentages work. Maybe. I wanted to just bring that up because, uh, like I said, I got a hold of Connor as quickly as I could. So we're, we're at the end of the line on the demo delay. Is there, the is there a provision that with the owner's... Uh, Agreement, we can continue it. Would the owner be willing to? Not that I know of. Would the owner be willing to withdraw or hold off on a demolition delay application until be... such time as they figured out whether or not a? Uh... I'll answer that question. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. We we would we would like to have a decision today. Okay. And we can move. We we are open to moving forward, uh, and trying to find a way to incorporate this, but. Um, the decision today is, you know, we'd like to know where we're going. Yeah. Clarity is a good thing. Yep. Well, I'm hearing two things now. I'm hearing that you're not in a hurry, and now you're saying you want a decision. So if we give you the decision that you want, you can tear it down tomorrow, and we don't have any recourse. If we find a way to continue, then we're all still in the game. So we're trying to do our best to save this building if there's poss if there's a possible way to do it to satisfy what what the owner needs to accomplish i guess you could say but once we pass off on demolition it's a done deal mm -hmm. and the other alternative for us is to move it toward designation which is it makes it a done deal for you so i'm trying to keep the or the door open and that's why i ask so if you insist on a decision, you may get, you may get one you don't want. If I can add to it, my understanding is that there isn't enough to support designating at this point. Um, I'm not sure so that's... We'd like to leave the options open. Yeah, I'm not sure that's been it. fully explored. It hasn't been in my mind. Well, it does say staff finds that the property does not meet the architectural and historical criteria. That's staff's opinion. Staff doesn't uh, vote. Staff. Staff <laughs> works for us. I, I work for we the like staff. Guys. We disagree with staff from time to time. I don't work for you guys. <laughs> or for the staff. I mean, I, you know, just to be totally transparent, we really struggle trying to maintain the historic integrity of this town. And 
our counterparts in planning continually zone us out of being able to do that by offering economic opportunities for development that are just overwhelmingly lucrative. And so when we get houses that are designed houses that are very nice, that fit the neighborhood, that have a place in the history and of the town and make it the place that everybody wants to come to to build new buildings, we keep losing buildings. And it's, we're, you know, we don't have the perfect mechanism for working with owners that <coughs> we, we have two options. We can say, sure, tear it down, what, what do we care? Or we can say, no, we're going to find a way to designate it and now you're at our mercy. And we prefer not to do that in every case because all buildings aren't, you know, maybe they're not up to that quality. This is a well-designed building. I mean, we, we struggled with whether it was a Nichols design building or not because it has so many attributes of, of, uh, of free classic architecture that's fam that Bloomington's famous for. So I, I could probably find a reason to designate it, but finding a way to work. Demolition's final. <laughs> And we never have any control over what happens next. So that's our concern. Is there any other house like this in Bloomington? I haven't seen one. Mm -hmm. Well, we have, lots of, we have lots of criteria. We have age. We have a familiar object in the landscape. Mm -hmm. we have, we've got plenty of criteria to designate this house. Mm -hmm. And the criteria, there's. There's, you know, there's architectural criteria, historic criteria, and it's so openly worded that it's not difficult for an intelligent person to make a solid argument for why it should be designated. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can honestly say I've never seen another one like it. It's beautifully done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uniquely done. Um, it's, uh, you might remind your owner that the students like unique, and they pay more for it. <laughs> as Chickering has discovered, <laughs> they uh, they really pick out some nice houses and you know paint them up nice and make them beautiful, and they get top dollar for them. If I, if I can add, I understand that you think at the end, if you if you release this, that it's a done deal. It truly is not a done deal. But at the same point, like I said, we want some clarity on what direction. If yeah. if 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 that is an option. We need to know that that remains an option to take it down. If it is not, then we need to move forward in that in that lane. So. I think we, I can safely say we go to bat for all kinds of support of, the, of an addition that needed five, six, seven variances to try and make it happen. So we may be in the world where we have to just go ahead on good faith and understand that that's economic pressures do speak loudly but you know I I know that the when I walk through and talk to the owner he he does have an understanding of old houses and 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 uh, slim opportunity to find a way to make this work could happen you know I, I I'm not sure I want to see it going to council. That's, that's the other thing I think about what's the reality of, of that process. And this is a council that voted for it, the new UDO. And yeah, but that's not our decision. That's their decision. Right. Mm -hmm. We have a different decision to make. Are we going to let this keep happening or not? And if, <clears throat> if, if we can't, if there's nothing we can do about it, fine. I'll, but, go, I'll go home. But as long as there's something we can do about it, I think that's what we should be doing. If the council wants to decide differently, then that's the council. I'm not going to make decisions, you know, based on what I think somebody else might decide. That was similar reasoning why the commission decided to designate the core building. Yeah. I mean, you guys use the same logic yeah, there, so I was just talking about Exactly the same thing. Because if you don't, somebody will see a better, better economic opportunity. Mm-hmm or what, what looks like one, anyway. I think this is a gem. Then let's move it. 
towards designation. You asking for motions? Mm -hmm. I'll make one. You got the sheet? Nope. What's the address on this guy? Uh, I'll put this uh, 14, 14 East 9th. Uh, uh, today, where? Bah, 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 regarding the property located at 414 East 9th Street, <coughs> the Historic Preservation Commission declares that it got noticed of the proposed demolition and requests that staff prepare a formal report on the property and put the property on the HPC agenda to be officially considered for local historic designation under VMC 8.08.01D. Okay. Second. Um, Doug Bruce? Oh, do we have a do second? Do we have a second? I second. Okay. Okay. I uh, abstain. Sam Seller? Yep. Jeff Golden? No. John Saunders? Yes. Chris Durbaum? Very close. <laughs> <laughs> Take all the time you need. You need a coin? No, I'm just joking. You should decide to step on a coin. Yes. Motion carries. I do want to bring something up because we've made this mistake in the past. I think we need to place it under interim protection mm -hmm. uh, because the 90 days will be up next week so moved Second. Mm -hmm. you want me to read the thing there's a thing for it yeah, yeah. Read yes. thing. today after above the hbc recommends that the common council locally designate the property at 414 east 9th street uh where am i as historic and places the property under interim protection pending action by the common council under bmc 8.08.015 okay okay doug bruce abstain yeah, sam DeSaller. yes Jeff Golden? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Chris Durbaum? Yes. Motion carries. All right. <clears throat> that said, I would also like to say that we will totally go to bat to do whatever we can do to get an addition working out for this one. Absolutely. What does that process look like? Uh, so what's going to happen next is, um, well, this is interesting. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. This is gets scheduled on council but it, we don't know when it comes up on council schedule could be. the problem with this is two things have been done in one meeting that should have been done different stages because there's property owner notification that's required um, do we need I've, to off? I don't know if it's possible if we can both vote for uh, make a motion for staff to prepare a report and place it under inner protection, which is supposed to happen at the next meeting after staff has prepared a report, after <coughs> property owner has received notification. Yeah, maybe not, but just moving it to, we have to have a, an official formal hearing for designation from this group, which is what preparing, preparing the documents. But can we place it under inner protection I, now? I don't think we can do that until after that meet, other meeting is held. That's what I think, You're, yeah. But in the meantime, he doesn't have a demolition permit, so he can't tear it down. Right, but when the 90 days has gone by legally, he has the right to tear it down. Five. But we'll meet within 90 days, won't we? 90 days no. is almost up. Is 90 days is saying. Tuesday. Yeah, but we've moved to designate. That's what stops the demolition. Inter I don't want to say anything else right now. We can made talk a motion later. And, second in it and you've done something. Mm -hmm. Legal um, will figure it out. Yep. I am. I am going to have to consult with others. Um, and render an opinion. Uh, I can't do it at the moment. Uh, this meeting is going to continue for a little while. So I'll see if I can raise Philippa to discuss with her what her thoughts are. If it's something that needs to get corrected at this meeting, we can still do it while this meeting is continuing. Um, or she'll tell me that it's perfectly fine what you did. Uh, and then you won't have to make any changes. Okay. Makes no sense to do it at a following meeting. Mm -hmm. It sounds to it me like there was its a own for No, it's that. not. It's it doesn't need to be under interim protection as long as there's no demolition permit. 
if, if the 90 days runs. If the 90 days is up in, yeah. you know, on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah but we've already hit the designation. No, no, that it doesn't, Duncan. No, we've done that with 523 West 7th. We found right. out that it doesn't. That's right. And that city doesn't have a case. No, they, that guy, that house got demolished without a permit. Period. Their argument legally was that the city had an obligation to release the permit because the 90 days had expired and therefore they're not liable. And because we didn't move for interim protection. We didn't move for interim protection. Right, so okay. For yeah. settlement. All right, so go. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get an opinion here for sure. Yeah. All right, so we can move on. Right. Yeah, belt suspenders is not a bad thing. We're on hold for a minute. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on to demolition delay 20-7, 1209 West 2nd Street. And our petitioner's with us. Great. Okay. Got her. All right, um, all I have to say about this one is you've already released it. In the full demolition coming back around, planning determined that since a year has lapsed since the demolition has had been released, that this needs to be re-reviewed by the HPC. Um, I didn't do any additional research uh, to supplement the staff report um, written by Rachel Ellison in 2018. Um, so there's nothing new that's come up. Um, it's the same structure. It's the same request for a full demolition. That will be released. Okay. Second. We might have to wait for Doug to come back. Oh. Oh, right. Right up. Yeah, we're not a form. Do you have anything to add, Mrs. Freeman? I'm sorry. Do you have anything to add for us? Well, I will just say we had continued for quite a while to see if anyone wanted the house. We I know. talked to real estate agents. We talked to the Monroe uh, County Youth Shelter. They right. were already they already had a plan for a big addition and. We tried, and you know it, you know the property. Mm -hmm. It is in a very commercial, it's zoned commercial arterial. It's in a very almost industrial commercial area. It is not in a neighborhood. So we tried, but um, we even got estimates. We got bids for moving the house if anyone wanted to move it. Um, we were even going to kick in and. Nobody wanted it. Um, they would have to pull off the stone halfway up. They weren't sure what the stone was either. It wasn't, they didn't think it was real, you know, um, that it had been fabricated. So we tried. Thank you. Okay, do you want to Information? Not yet. Can, can we do a, can we do a motion to release this one? Okay. Hang on one second. Uh, we have Doug back, so let's finish up with uh, 20 7. And uh, Chris made a motion to release this one. Paper. 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 I'm sorry. You're fine. No, you're fine. You're fine. Thank you I, so much. I didn't know there was a deadline. It's okay. Today, regarding the property located at 1209 West 2nd Street, the Historic Preservation Commission declares that it got notice of the proposed demolition. After today's discussion, sees no need to review the plans any further and waives the rest of the demolition delay waiting period. HPC may later recommend the property for a historic designation to the Common Council. Second. Doug Bruce? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. Jeff Golden? Yes. Sean Saunders? Yes. Chris Durbaum? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Okay, thank you for your time again. Sorry, thank you for your patience. Yeah. Thank you for your patience tonight. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to the right, so I can show you the chair. Your, your um, I'm just kind of boring stuff. It's true. I would like to read the right way to open the stuff for bonds and stuff. Oh, hey, it's a good I'm kind of mad at that. Well, why don't you try the article to you have to read that. Yeah. Yeah. Because even though the permit expired, here we only used the 2008 election. Right. But I have the new one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So when I looked at that in the packet, I was like, okay, next. I mean, I hate it. Yeah. yeah. Next. So all right, this is Demolition Delay 28, 110 South Indiana Avenue. Uh, the rating is notable. This is a partial demolition, so they want to create a door right here uh, in the alley side um, under this window to meet fire egress. Um, I asked the petitioner if there's somewhere else they could put the door in the building to meet fire egress besides on the alley side, and that's not a possibility. So um, it's the alley side, and I think it. It's not going to destroy this building, um, so staff would recommend release. No question. Will they do it in in a decorative way? Can they make the door? This very plain door. That's a steel door. Mm -hmm. So a whole metal frame, steel lintel angle, leaving the bricks alone. I guess it's no worse than the garbage cans. <laughs> and they even drew the garbage cans. Uh, yeah. 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 It looks like they're putting, uh, it does not look like it's centered under the uh, windows, and it also looks like there's some light fixture above there. Is there any information on that? That looks centered to me. Under the, well, under the two windows. Right. On the picture before, which, oh. uh, that's, ah, that's two windows. Okay, that makes more sense now. All right. And then there's a light fixture or something over it? I suppose so. I imagine it's an exit. I mean, it's an emergency right, light. light you've got to have at the, at the exit. The so less obtrusive, the, the better. So this is a this is a fire code. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is this a new requirement? Why? Is well, they're re doing some extensive remodeling on the inside. I think this was something that the fire alerted them to. They had to comply with. So they're probably changing More than their footprint and getting any space. Any two exits, I bet. Yeah. <coughs> Does it have to be it's, metal? It should be metal. We should, should be metal. It's going to get beat it's up. On the, it's on the it's going to have trash cans yeah, in front of it. Trash can well, we don't have anything to say about it. Right, we're not conducting design review here. Mm -hmm. yeah. can, they, can they cut a hole on the side of the building as well? Yeah. And can they screw in some... I think the only thing that I would say is make them put the lights in and make sure that, well, they're going to have conduit going yeah, through the building too. The they're going to they're gonna muck with it. But, you know, in terms of life safety, yeah. you don't want to mess around. Match their mortar. Yep. Okay, Jeff. Today, regarding the property located at 110 South Indiana Avenue, the Historic Preservation, Preservation Commission declares that it got notice of the proposed partial demolition, and after today's discussion, sees no need to review the plans any further and waives the rest of the demolition delay waiting period. HPC may later recommend the property for historic designation to the Common Council. Second. Doug Bruce. Yes. Sam Saller. Yes. Jeff Golden. Yes. John Saunders. Yes. Chris Durbaum. Yes. Motion carries. All right, <laughs> we're back to demolition delay 1925. If I could, real quick, you had said to wait a moment. I, I apologize, I stepped out. Was there something in this direction? No, we were just finishing up. Oh, that's gotcha, The okay. two previous so delays. Is that, is that coming back up at this point, or do we wait we're, to hear? We're, we're ready to finish up with your project. Oh, okay, I'll wait. Sorry, I didn't know if that was on another time. No. Time. Gotcha. no. Sorry. What did uh, Chris say? Still working on it. I just want to get a quick gander at Title 20 to see if I can confirm or deny it. It's really a lawyer decision. Okay, I really do. It doesn't do strong.
حفظ کنیم I don't see it. I don't think it's in the code saying uh, having something about having to give the property owner notification. That's probably in the, his, the HPC's rules and procedures and maybe even the CLG rules and procedures, certified local government rules and procedures. It could be in that document as well. We're a certified local government, so we have to conduct our preservation commission a certain way. Um, I know I saw that, and that's... Oh, because CLGs don't have demolition delay. Right. <coughs> that, that's there, true. There wouldn't be any demolition delay provision in a CLG ordinance. Okay. I was trying to think of where that was because that <clears throat> was what got us with 523 West 7th. Because we didn't place it under interim protection um, and we didn't give the property owner proper notification that these meetings were taking place. Like they didn't have the opportunity to show at a meeting before the structure was forwarded to the council for designation. So what was the advice from legal? We don't have it yet. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where you want to be, right? Change anything. No, I know. We're just looking at Yeah, but I'll let them worry. Yeah. Okay, well then so let's go home. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> yeah, you don't need us to be here, right? No. There's some old All right. Oh, there there is some old business. Let's do it. I, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we postpone old business to our next meeting. Yes. Okay. Is anything, anything to clock? We didn't have a motion to that. Anything on the clock that we have to do? We're done. So, okay, so nothing we can do. Restaurant row. Yeah, it's just restaurant row. Keep pushing it back then. We'll have a regular length meeting one of these days where we can discuss that. Maybe I'm sorry. I'll be on my way over here. Oh, nice. Look at that. Look at that. Did you buy the car? Just I, 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 we officially. <laughs> <laughs>